all the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Tiger Vision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planter Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven 8 bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. Whether you are combining, hauling grain, or heating your home, fuel powers the fall. When it comes to energy, you need a company who is trustworthy, understands your needs, and who delivers to you. A company who is local, reliable, and affordable. That company is Ag State. Ag State Energy is clean, comfortable, convenient, while staying competitively priced for our customers. Give Laura Sanguine or Seth Duff a call for all your energy needs. MHI and Cuso of Cherokee are on the move, expanding, and in need of residential treatment workers, psychiatric security specialists, and LPNs. We deal with disorders that you can't see. You get to help people who are in desperate need of help, and helping those people actually helps the community as well. The benefits here, I think, are top-notch. That was why I came here. To learn more and to apply, visit governmentjobs.com. 
Hello and welcome to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Jays basketball is on the air. 2024 looks to be a new year for these young Lady Jays. The Jays come into the ball game with a record of one in 10. Meanwhile, the Westerners come in here one game below 500 with a, I'm sorry, one game above 500 with a four and three record. Tonight's starting lineups and analysis on these two teams with my partner Drew Bickford after this. You're watching Jays and Westerners on Fuller Digital Solutions. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you. So you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right. Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford as the Westerners traveled to Lamar's Galen to take on the Jays here tonight. And Drew, the Lady Jays are looking to come off of a little bit of a beat up end of 2023 as they took on St. Mary's and it was a big loss and only with two girls left on the bench. A lot of injuries on the Galen side. Um, torn ACLs, uh, turned ankles. Uh, very depleted bench, so nice to have some of the girls back, uh, back on the bench. Um, and and re the, the break couldn't have came at a better time for these girls. It was it was much needed. Jays will be still without Haley Lubin, who twisted an ankle in the St. Mary's game, and Hallie Waldenbach found out that she does in fact have a torn ACL. So her season this year is over. The Jays, however, do get. Um, Nevea Hodgson back, a big presence down low, and Grace Kellen, who had uh, something with a hand, I believe like a fingertip or something in that neighborhood. And both of those will be good. Uh, Grace was starting to f come off firing at the end of uh, 2023. Just nice to have more bodies on the bench, that's for sure. We will turn this one over shortly to our public address announcer. Remind you that Friday night, we will be back on the air as the Jays host the Hinton Blackhawks. Tip time is, or air time is 6 o'clock. Tip time will be shortly after that. School is back in session tomorrow. So moms and dads out there, get your kids ready to go. And uh, hopefully you got the lunches packed, sleep schedule back on cycle. I know we've been a late night household lately. It might be a rough morning tomorrow for a lot of kids. As we get ready to turn this one over to our public address announcer. Good evening. Welcome to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym here at Galen Catholic for tonight's Boy Girl Varsity Doubleheader. Let's extend a special welcome to our guests, the Westerners from Akron Westfield. Galen Catholic Schools encourage positive sportsmanship and behavior at the game tonight. By practicing good sportsmanship, you will help make tonight's game one to remember. Let's give a hand for our officials for tonight's game. Kurt Strouth, Joel Cranbeck, and Brad Van Rokel. Now let's welcome the coaches. The Westerners are coached by Kent Johnson, assisted by John Ludwig. The Jays are coached by Brandon Shecker, assisted by Brian Kolbeck. And now here are the starters. For the Westerners, a junior, number 11, Allie Swoyer. 
For the Jays, a junior, number three, Rizea Sitzman. For the Westerners, a junior, number 12, Bo Harris. For the Jays, a senior, number 10, Haley Poland. For the Westerners, a junior, number 14, Josie Jacobs. For the Jays, a senior, number 32, Larissa Poland. For the Westerners, a junior, number 20, Mackenzie Hughes. For the Jays, a junior, number 42, Sammy Zubrod. For the Westerners, a junior, number 23, Laney Shuknik. For the Jays, a senior, number 50, Navea Hudson. Please stand and remove your hats as Braden Bolin sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Catholic in Lamars, Iowa instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academics, service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford as we get ready for tonight's opening tip. Of course, tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Ack State. And the bottom line brought to you by Schuster Trucking. Hodgson in that center circle. Good to have her back. Opening tip controlled by the Jays. Rizea. Pulls it in the corner, down low for Haley Poland, and she's gonna be fouled early here by Josie Jacobs. Good luck early. Last time these two teams played, it was a back and forth game, really close game up till halftime. Um, be interesting to see if either team comes out sluggish after a break. Sitzman with the inbound, a lot of fakes, gets it in before. Uh, Hodgson pulls up quick jumper, knocks it down. Jays with early 2-0 lead. Jay showing extended press. Hodgson. Corner. Three from Jacobs. No good. Rebound fought for. And they're going to say it was off of a Westerner out of bounds. They're going to say it was off of Bo Harris. Over the back call, I believe. 2-0, the early lead for the Jays. Sitzman brought it up over the timeline. Dribbles left. Shot fake across to Haley Poland. Poland pulls back to Sitzman. Sitzman with the left hand, left side of the baseline. To Larissa Poland, back to Haley, back to Larissa near the top of the key. Bounce pass down low to Zubrod. Zubrod back out to Haley Poland, or to Larissa Poland rather. 
Hand it off to Zubra. That one blocked partially by Hughes, and Hughes will bring it up the floor herself. One minute gone in this first period. Three-pointer, no good from Sawyer. Sitzman with a rebound, and she brings up the floor with a left hand. Over the timeline, passes to Hodgson in the near side. Hodgson pulls the trigger on a three, no good, not able to get her own rebound. Sawyer with the rebound, and Hodgson commits the foul. Not a bad foul. Akron was going to be out and a run out, but don't know if you want to waste your fouls with a depleted bench either. Jays lead this one 2 to nothing here. 6.40 left to go in the first quarter. Into the corner. Uh, Harris with the three, no good. Zubrod comes away with a rebound. Up ahead is Hodgson, brings it up over the timeline. Cross court pass to Haley Poland, back to Larissa Poland. Over to Hodgson. Cross court back to Larissa. Larissa drives with the right hand. Center of the paint to Zubrod. Zubrod, ball swiped at, puts up the right hand, no good. Rebound comes away with is Jacobs. Jacobs quickly ahead to Swoyer. Swoyer bumped down low. Haley Poland swipes away at the ball, and we're going to have a held ball. It will remain Westerners basketball with 26 seconds left on the shot clock. The last time these two teams played, Akron got real hot from the outside. If the Jays stay at 1-3-1, they're going to have open looks. Right now, they haven't knocked him down. Saw an open look there, another open look there. And that one's knocked down by Josie Jacobs. She has the first three points for Akron, and it's 3-2 Akron Westfield. Sitzman brings the ball up for the Jays. His two Jays come to the scorer's table. Sitzman with a three of her own. For Isaiah Sitzman trying to get a hot early in the new year. She harasses Hughes, who gets it up over the timeline in the near corner. With Shecknuck, far corner, three, Swoyer, no good, rebound by Larissa Poland. Larissa will bring it ahead, up over the timeline with a right hand, 524 left to go in this first quarter. Near the top of the key, Sitzman. Sitzman, bounce pass out to Poland. Poland drives left side of the paint, puts up a floater and in. Larissa Poland with her first two points, and it's 7-3. Jay's showing extended press. Tried to get it, almost a walk there as they brought it up over the timeline. That's going to be out of bounds. A little too hot to handle for Bo Harris. A little token pressure pays off. We're going to have a timeout here. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll take it with them. Back in 60 on Fuller Digital Solutions. Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment. Back here at the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Sorry for the interruption on the commercial. Promise we'll get that back in is Grace Sitzman. Grace Kellen, I'm sorry, travels with a basketball. Bo Harris, the inbound, gets it back right at midcourt. Cross court to Jacobs, down in the paint. Swoyer puts it up and in. Allie Swoyer with her first two points of the ball game. It's 7-5. Rizea brings it up, kicks right to Haley Poland, back up top of the key. Rizea Sitzman over to Haley Poland with it now. Haley to Grace Kellen in the near corner. Bounce pass out to Haley Poland. 18 left on the shot clock. She drove for just a second. Out to Schmidt. To Zubrod. Zubrod backs her defender down. No good off the front of the rim. And Jacobs comes away with the basketball. She dribbles it up on her own up over the timeline. Gets it down low. And a fight for it down low. It's going to be a held ball. Nice job by Haley Poland. Jay's got lucky there. Akron with a good pass. Cut right through the zone and, and luckily tied it up down low. Grace inbounds it to Rizea, back to Grace. She's got those two fingers splinted up on the right hand there. That one's poked out of bounds. It's going to remain Jay's basketball. 4.03 left to go here. 
And we are going to see Bella Schrader coming to the ball game for Sammy Zubrod. Bella did a nice job last time out here at the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. She gets better every time she sees the court. A little bit of a raw talent, but hard to coach size as Jacobs intercepts that pass across the paint, and she is fouled. Foul's going to be on Grace Kellen. That's her first team's second, and it's going to send Mackenzie Hughes to the line to shoot two. Not the girl you want on the line. Shooting 83% on the year. Solid. <laughs> Mackenzie knocks down the first one. Brings it to a one-point ball game. A couple of subs in for the Jays. Mackenzie Hughes will have an opportunity at the second. Puts it up and knocks that one down. Mackenzie Hughes, two for two here tonight. 7-7 seven, seven. as Poland brings it up over the timeline, tries to get it down low and a little too hard for Schmidt. Ball goes up on the stage. I think it went behind the curtain. As the official hops up, now hops back down. Hughes will be the inbounder. Gets it down low in the paint, and Paulson commits her first personal. It's going to be the team's third. So the last couple of times that Jays ran that 1-3-1, one, one, Akron was able to get it to the middle. And once they get it to the middle, all five girls from Galen got to sprint back and protect the paint, and right now they've got to turn it in jogging, not getting back and closing that lane. Near corner, now cross-court pass to Jacobs. Nice ball movement by Akron. Jacobs with it again into that corner. Three-point attempt, knocked down. Great shot by Mackenzie Hughes. She now has five. Averaging about 22 a game on the year. No fluke this late in the season. Not halfway through, nice spin. Down low to Paulson, puts it up, no good. Rebound by Shecknick. Ball pushed ahead, Harris. Three-point attempt, no good. Rebound, chased after and out of bounds was Josie Jacobs. 303 left to go here in this first quarter. Just a quick blow there for Rizea, or not Rizea, I'm sorry, for uh, Nevaeh Hodgson and for Haley Poland. As Sitzman brings it up over the timeline again with a left hand, drives, hands it off to, to Paulson. Now to Rissa Poland near the top of the key. Dribbles back, now in the paint, puts up a floater, and she is fouled in the act of shooting. Foul's going to be on Laney Shecknuck, I believe. No, they're going to call it on Josie Jacobs. That's going to be her first. Oh, sorry, second. Teams third. Still a little early for two. That one rattles in and out. No good for Larissa Poland. Might not see Josie too much left in this first half with two fouls. Curious to see what their uh, coaching strategy is. Second free throw attempt is up. Knocks that one down, nothing but net. She now has three. Stolen away by Paulson. Spot up three from Larissa, and she knocks that one down. Larissa Poland now with six. Jays scored the last four, uh, four points. Hughes drives with the left hand, tries to pass it off to the corner, saved to Hodgson. Larissa Poland brings it up over the timeline, stops on the logo, cross court, tried to get it to Sitzman, pass intercepted by Hughes. Hughes with a right hand, right side of the paint, count the basket, and the foul. Almost a little bit of a why do you need to take that swipe at the ball. Great hustle back, but she either has to make sure she doesn't get that bucket up and foul her hard, or just take the mistake and, and move on. Sammy Zubrod coming in for Paulson as the foul was on Marissa Poland. 
That was the eighth point for Mackenzie Hughes. It's 13 to 11 in favor of Akron. Sitzman drives in the paint, puts up a left hand floater, good. Rye now with five. 13, 13 as Hughes gets it up over the timeline. And we're gonna have a tie up. And Bella Scheitler comes into the ball game now for Larissa Poland. Ali Swarrier the inbound, no I'm sorry, Hughes is the inbounder. Hughes gets it in the corner, long two, no good. Hughes gets the rebound, puts it back up, no good. Sammy Zubrod comes down with it and we're gonna have a held ball. It'll be Jay's possession. Akron will get the sub in here. Caverly Fairbanks coming to the ball game for Allie Sawyer. Sitzman will bring it up for the Jays. Over the timeline, passes left to Scheitler. Scheitler bounce pass to Haley Poland. Haley to Sitzman. Near the logo, now in between the circles. Over to Scheitler. Scheitler. Drives toward the baseline, puts up a shot. They're going to say the foul was on the floor. It's going to be an inbound from the baseline. It's going to be Akron's fourth team foul. And it's going to be on Laney Shechnick, the 5'6 junior forward. Sitzman with the inbound. Hodgson near the top of the key. Haley Poland back to Hodgson. Hodgson to Scheitler. Scheitler with the jumper, no good. Rebound, Hughes comes away with that. She's kind of been the all everything for Akron here. And Hodgson reached in and committed the foul. She was in perfect possession, just can't take that foul. Too valuable on the court. 62 seconds left in the first quarter. It's a tie ball game at 13. Hughes puts up the first, in and out. No, I'm sorry, not Hughes, but rather Emma Rolfs with the uh, free throw, in and out, no good. Jays with a couple of subs here. Second free throw attempt is up and good for Emma Rolfs. 14-13, Westerners with the lead. Now just under a minute to go in the first. Sitzman directing traffic, gets it to Schmidt on the far side, back to Sitzman near the top of the key, drives, steps back, puts up a jumper off the back iron, no good, rebound by Hughes. Hughes brings it up the floor into the paint. Pass fake and a nice layup with a left hand by Mackenzie Hughes. Halfway to her average, Drew, right? Halfway through her at to her average in one quarter. Sitzman, deep three, contested, no good. Rebound, fought for and come away with by Emma Rolfs. Rolfs gets it ahead to Hughes. Hughes gets it up over the timeline to Shechnick. Far corner, long two is good for Rolf. She now has three, it's 17-13. 10 seconds left to go, Sitzman quickly brings it up with the timeline. With a left hand, gets a screen from Zubrod. Into the near side. And the Jays are not able to get a shot up before the quarter. Westerners lead this one 18-13 after one. We'll be back after one. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling joined by Drew Bickford. Drew, Joy, Jay's struggled there a little bit at the end of the first quarter. Mackenzie Hughes got hot, and you knew it was going to be coming sooner or later. You don't average 22 points per game on accident. Especially over seven games. Bo Harris with it near top of the key. Passes left. Now down low. 
Back out near the top of the key, Bo Harris with it again. Now Swoyer, and Swoyer travel the basketball. Ag State is our scoreboard sponsor tonight. Bottom line brought to you by Schuster Trucking. Poland. Dribble drive, puts up a floater, try to get the bank, no good. Zubrod clears it out, no good. Rebound fought for, and we're going to have a jump ball, and it will be Jay's basketball off the back of Larissa Poland. I thought for sure that was a foul, and that was a bad foul all the way on the other side of the court. Uh, that would have been her second. Jay's lucky right there. Horn didn't get fixed over break, huh? No, they think it might be the access point right above us here. <laughs> 7.23 left to go here in the second. Ball slapped. And it is stolen away. Hughes comes away with it. It's going to be a free run for her. Up and in. Mackenzie Hughes now with 12. They're on a 5 hole run right now. Akron definitely did their homework. They, they knew where that ball was going on that elevator screen out top. Schmidt to Sitzman, or Sitzman to, to Sitzman in the paint, and it's stolen away by Rolfs. Hughes will bring it up over the timeline. And then your side, Swarrier, 3, off the iron, no good. Ball fought for. Sitzman comes away with it. She'll bring it up the floor herself, up over the timeline. Had a runner, Schmidt, a little too high and out of her reach. Right idea, about three dribbles too late though. Had her, could have led her to the rim, but instead waited until she got there. Hughes with it. 6.40 left to go here in the second quarter. Swoyer, corner, Fairbanks knocks it down. Fairbanks with the three. And it's now 22 to 13. Kellen with it on the far side to Sitzman. Sitzman with a little head fake. Bounce, or direct pass. Now Zubrod in the paint, tried to get it to Schmidt. And the Jays have not done a good job of getting, I know they want to feed Schmidt, but they have not been able to get her the basketball. All the passes so far, just a smidge high. Kind of coming off her hands. Haley Poland committed the foul. It's the team's first of the second quarter. Jays are going to do an extended press here. Schmidt on the inbounder. Swoyer gets the inbound pass into Harris. Harris will bring it up over the timeline. Spins to Hughes. Hughes drives toward the paint. Euro step, puts it up. No good. She's going to go to the line to shoot two, Drew. She is continually attacking the rim. Jays not able to stay in front. Second team foul for the Jays here in the second quarter, and that one was on Sammy Zubrod. As Hughes puts up the first, rims in and out, no good. Rare miss for McKenzie. In Akron, it seemed that Akron went on a run, and the Jays just would hang around. But in Akron, it was Nevaeh Hudson that was actually keeping them in the game with a lot of mid-range jumpers. Uh, right now she's on the bench, so she's not going to be helping out. So somebody's got to get hot to keep us in the game. Hughes the line to shoot the second. Puts it up and in. Hughes now with 13. And Paulson travels with the basketball. And just as we talked about Hodgson, she comes back into the ball game. Coach Mike Meyer in the stands here tonight. Chatting it up with some former students here. Bo Harris harassed in the backcourt, able to bring it up over the timeline. Saves it from going out of bounds. Gets it to the top of the key, Jacobs. Jacobs dribbles right, now back left. Still at the top of the key. Passed it over to Shecknick, now in the corner. Swoyer, Hughes, three, in and out, no good. Kellen with a rebound. Kellen will bring it up over the timeline. It's going to be a reach-in foul on Hughes. 
On the other end, Nevaeh Hatz has got to be really careful. Got away with a little reach out at, at midcourt, and then uh, another reach once the, her ball handler picked the ball up. Can't afford to have a third before halftime. Bounce pass in to Schmidt. Now Hodgson over to Paulson. Paulson puts it up, three, bank. Banks open late. I read her lips, she called it. 24-16, <laughs> top of the key. Harris with it now, passes right to Hughes. Hughes bounce pass into the corner to Sawyer. Sawyer gets it down low to Hughes. Nice block by Schmidt. Stolen away. The bounce pass stolen away by Hodgson. Gets it over to Kellen. Kellen brings it up over the timeline. Able to avoid the, the uh, pickpocket. Over to Hodgson. Hodgson cross court to Schmidt. Three. No good. Rebound by Schickman. Gets it to Hughes who brings it up over the will bring it up over the timeline for the Westerners. She stops to Sawyer. Back to Hughes. Nice cut. And Hodgson third. Hodgson commits her third. I gotta imagine. Oh no. Oh, they're gonna call that one on Jay's Schmidt. Jay's luck out on that one. Because that was definitely on the Vey on the arm. I thought for sure. Nonetheless, Hughes at the line, puts up the first and in. She now has 14 on the night. Team has 25, so she counts for more than half the team scoring. Second free throw attempt from Hughes. Bounces a third time, puts it up and in. She now has 15, and the lead is extended to 10. Pulling, bounce pass out to Sitzman. Sitzman, top of the key, thought about a three, kicked it further now to Larissa Polin. Bounce pass to Paulson. Paulson now back to Sitzman. 14 left on the shot clock. Larissa Polin. That ball swatted at, picked up by McKen by uh, Hughes. Thought there was a little bit of a carry there. Shot no good from Jacobs. Hughes gets the rebound. Jacobs puts up the put back, and that one's in. She now has five, 28 to 16. Kellen kicks right to Larissa Pullen, back to Kellen, puts up the three with a defender standing right next to her. 28-19. Sawyer backs down the defender and puts up that one. She now has four, it's 30 to 19. Larissa Pullen over to Sitzman. Sitzman drives with a left hand, puts it up, rattles around, no good. Bo Harris comes away with it. Ahead to Hughes. Hughes has been a one-man rocking ball here for the Westerners tonight. Shechnick bounce pass to Sawyer into the corner. Three, no good. Rebound by Paulson. Cross court pass to Larissa Polin. Polin brings it up over the timeline. Over to Sitzman. Sitzman, eye to three. Drives and the Jays just threw that one away. Shechnick found a basketball right in her lap. So right now on the defensive end, the Jays, when they're closing out, they're closing out out of control. They're closing out quick, but they're not staying in position, which is leading to wide open runners. And then once the once Akron does have the ball, they're up so tight that when they do pass it in back door, it's open as well. So just standing up too tall, closing out of control, um, something that they'll look to fix at halftime. Grace Kellen picked up her second in the basket was by Josie Jacobs. Count the basket and the foul. She'll try for the traditional three-point play. We are just over two minutes away from halftime. Free throw attempt, no good, does graze the rim. Did that official say that it didn't hit the rim? I think he thought it caught the underside of the backboard. To me, it looked like it touched the right side of the rim. I thought it caught the front of the rim. Maybe it's the angle hat, but I thought it hit the right front side of the rim. Sitzman, long three, no good. Rebound, fought for, we're gonna have a held basketball. And it's going to be Westerners basketball, 32-19. to 19. 
2.01 left to go here in the first. Harris inbounds it to Hughes. Hughes, long pass ahead. And a nice layup there by Rolfs. She has five. Stolen away from Zubrod. Hughes on a fast break. She is fouled by Larissa Poland. Great job just creating contact. Larissa did a pretty good job trying to stay away, but McKenzie forced that contact. If you're a coach, are you coaching your player in that situation to slow down? Or are you coaching them to go ahead but commit the foul but make sure that they aren't going to score on it? Defensively, I'm hoping my defender tries to get in front, puts their hands up, trying not to foul. Um, offensively, I want exactly what McKenzie just did, attack one-on-one, -on -one, see if she can draw contact, hopefully make the layup. We don't go to the rim trying to get fouled. We go to the rim trying to score the bucket, but we'll take a foul too. She knocked down one of two. And Sitzman, a little bit of a head fake. Cross-court pass, Larissa Pullen. Chucks up a three, no good. Hughes comes away with it. Hughes runs ahead, puts it up off the backboard, and good. Hughes is a giant wrecking ball with 18 here tonight so far. Grace Kellen, bounce, pack, bounce pass back to Larissa Poland. Poland dribbles to the near side, now dribbles back out near the top of the key, bounce pass, tried to get it to Grace Kellen. Athleticism of the Westerners, able to get that bounce pass away. Rolfs pass left to Hughes. Hughes back to Rolfs. Three, no good. Rebound by Kellen, who quickly brings it ahead, poked away by Hughes out of bounds. It will remain Jay's basketball. 41 seconds left. Sitzman being directed to the almost to the far corner to inbound this one. Sitzman bounce pass into Paulson. Paulson back to Sitzman near the top of the key. Dribbles now backs it up again between the circles. Sitzman kicks it out to Paulson. Paulson on that far side bounce pass. Sitzman puts up a three, no good rebound. It's going to be off the Westerners and it's going to be Jay's basketball with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Akron, a great job of scouting, um, understanding who the shooter is for Galen, and every time Galen's inbounding the ball, who's trying to get a shot. Um, so far, they've shut down Isaiah on all the out-of-bounds plays. I think the two officials were coming together to see if the shot clock needed to be turned off. Ball never touched the rim. And no possession, so. Stolen away by Swoyer. Swoyer, a nice job of stealing that bounce pass. Puts it up off the backboard and in. Allie Swoyer with six. It's 39 to 19. Sitzman, half court shot. It's going to be off the Westerners. No good. Sitzman kind of forced that one a little early there, Drew. Must have either misheard or misread the clock. We're going to have a timeout here. Full timeout. We'll take it with them back in 60 on Fuller. AgriVision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven eight bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. 
Welcome back to the Dub Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. 4.4 left to go before halftime. Paulson trying to get it in, gets it into Sitzman. She touches it, able to save it. Almost a half court shot off the backboard, no good. And that shot from Zubrod's gonna be no good. And we have reached the half. The Jays trail this one at halftime by 20. It's 39 to 19. We'll take a 60 second break and we'll be back with Coach Wilchin. You're watching Fuller Digital. Whether you are combining, hauling grain or heating your home, fuel powers the fall. When it comes to energy, you need a company who is trustworthy, understands your needs, and who delivers to you. A company who is local, reliable, and affordable. That company is Ag State. Ag State Energy is clean, comfortable, convenient, while staying competitively priced for our customers. Give Laura Sanguin or Seth Duff a call for all your energy needs. MHI and Cuso of Cherokee are on the move, expanding, and in need of residential treatment workers, psychiatric security specialists, and LPNs. We deal with disorders that you can't see. You get to help people who are in desperate need of help, and helping those people actually helps the community as well. The benefits here, I think, are top-notch. That was why I came here. To learn more and to apply, visit governmentjobs.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with Coach Wilchin. And Coach, you guys had a little bit of a disappointing, a uh, little bit of disappointment uh, going into the Christmas break as, uh, as you guys fell to the hands of Remsen St. Mary's. Yeah, Remsen had a nice game. Uh, they played us well. We stuck with them the first half, down four, I believe. Uh, they came out the third quarter, and uh, we didn't shoot very well, and they got some, uh, they out rebounded us uh, pretty badly that game. They've got a pretty good system running over there now, don't they? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And, you know, they got Holman at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, uh, and then Schmillen. You know, they got some height that causes problems in the second half. So when we got to help out on D, Holman kind of gets his position wherever he wants, and it's hard to get it back from him. That's where it's, it would be nice if you had a fully healthy game. I imagine yep. you do here after the break. Uh, I hope so. He had an MRI yesterday, or actually this morning. Uh, so he's got a few torn ligaments in his thumb. We'll have to deal with the rest of the season. But his ankle's back back probably 95% now. And that's about what you want. Yep. You guys had a bit of an adventurous week, and, and I understand that you guys had uh, some lo a uh, local business help you guys out. Yes, we, um, we've had some issues with our jerseys, getting lost, stolen, misplaced. So uh, I want to give a shout-out to Get Brandon 360. Uh, they donated some uh, jersey markings for us, so now – uh, we know whose jersey is what now moving forward from here on out. So. And it's, it's great to have a local local asset like Get Branded. Yes, we appreciate that. And then we also had Scott Linden uh, this week uh, donate his time uh, doing the team pictures and team photos for the end of the year. Does a great job uh, for those parents who are looking for it. It's the pictures are on Flickr. Yeah, and he does a great job. He's, he always does. He now doesn't have any kids at Galen but still gives a lot of his time back to the school and, and and it's it's such a great asset to have when he when he is around oh no doubt about it can't do it without him now tonight you guys take on akron westfield and they present their own set of challenges here tonight yeah they gave us a handful last um third game of the season where we played them last they beat us by 20 we got within two in the end of the third quarter beginning of the fourth uh it was a physical game um and that bothered us a little bit so i'm hoping tonight we rebound from that We're, we know what to expect we got good rest tonight it looks like uh, so we expect the game to be a little bit more in control than maybe it was the last time. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're ready. Now, we were talking a little bit off air. Carson Arns is out for just a little bit, or for a little bit of time anyway. You yeah. brought up a couple of young guys. Can you talk a little bit about the, the guys you brought up? Um, we brought up two freshmen, um, Mason Small. Uh, he's about, uh, what do they list him at, 6'4", A little bit of an oxymoronic name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. But uh, he's got some size. We actually brought him up about a week ago. A week before the Remsen game, um, uh, to, to replicate Holman and uh, Schmillen, and uh, he does a good job with that. We had our hands full with him in practice, so uh, he may see some minutes tonight. Uh, Sub and Gabe in and out, and then uh, Drake Hodson has been playing well in the. Um, he's also a freshman. He's playing really well in the um, the JV games, and he had a great football season. Um, he's a physical kid, maybe not as tall as Mason, but he he can put the ball on the ground, more of a driver, finish at the rim type. Mason's more of a finesse player. You can shoot the three, maybe a little better than Drake in, but they may see a little bit of time tonight. We'll see how it goes. 
Well, you guys have your hands full tonight, yep. and we get a we get a long stretch of uh, of game of home games here as as we get going. And, a, and a, I, I will give you a plug for your company because you guys were in <laughs> doing a lot of work on the cafeteria, and of course that that project's been about a year and a half in the uh, in the making as far as getting closer to completion. You guys did a lot of uh, uh, lower brick work here during the break. Yeah, we got the glazed tile in that's been a real pain in the rear end for the last year and a half, but. Uh, we got the materials in about two weeks ago, and it hit just right before Christmas break, so couldn't ask for anything more. Great, uh, great opportunity for for the fans to come out and check it check it out, and probably the best opportunity is uh, for the St. Mary's game with the uh, with the tailgate for Honduras. Yep, yep. So appreciate you joining us, Coach, and we will let you go uh, finish getting prepared. All right, that's been Coach Wilchin. We'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching Jays and Westerners on Fuller Digital Solutions. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you, so you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right. Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC hung up here welcome back to the deb campbell memorial gym matt Schilling, alongside drew bickford and drew it was a little bit of a rough rough going there in the first half especially dealing with mckenzie hughes the first quarter the jays hung right in there mckenzie actually had a pretty slow start um didn't really score until maybe five six minutes into the game and then she really took off uh jays um, always kind of worried about coming out of breaks like holiday breaks about how sluggish will your team be um, sometimes it can be a real benefit it can you can have some rest and you'll come back with a lot of energy and sometimes you come out pretty sluggish the Jays to start didn't come back come out too sluggish they, they came out are looking okay um, got in some foul trouble uh, they had Haley Lubin and Nevea Hudson come up with two fouls and, and those are two of the main starters that need to be in there. And when you are trying to shuffle in and out, trying to keep them out of foul trouble, um, that doesn't help. And then Mackenzie Hughes getting hot does not help either. Um, she is a, a stat stuffer. Uh, she gets about seven rebounds a game, 22 points per game. She shoots it at about 36% from three point range. She's an 83% free throw shooter. So she's very, very well rounded inside and out. Um, She's got 18 here tonight. 18 already, so only four shy of her season average. So, uh, yeah, it's. I'm sure uh, that Coach Shecker and Coach Colbeck are already talking about how to slow down Mackenzie Hughes. Um, the rest of the team has pitched in. Um, they do have a couple girls, Allie Sawyer and, and Josie Jacobs, each have six and seven, um, and Emma Ross has five. So it's not like nobody else is doing anything. But when one person has 18 at halftime, it's time to make them slow down. One of the surprising difficulties for me this year, Drew, has is, is been the struggle that the Jays have had in the paint. They've got, and I, I wouldn't say they have um, necessarily height size, but they have size in the paint where they shouldn't. I, f I feel like they shouldn't be dominated as much as it seems like they have been. Well, Akron has, has been in a 2-3 most of the first half. And if you're going to get it in the paint against a 2-3, it's either going to be pass-pass to shot or pass. If you're, you're passing the, into a post, the outside of that 2-3 is probably going to collapse and help. So it's got to be a quick move to get the shot up. And right now what we're seeing is a pass and a wait for a second before they decide what they want to do. And by that time, it's too late. Um, the defense has already collapsed, and there's nowhere for, that, for you to dribble the ball to make a move. The defense is there waiting, and, and that's when we've seen it get tipped away. Or if the extra pass, there is no there is no more gaps down low because they all collapse. So when they're trying to pass it across the paint, there's no space. So, so just what you're quicker. saying maybe is it's a little bit of indecision. Yes, just 
they got to they, they got to get it and either pass it right away or get it and lay it up um, or know what you're going to do with it before it gets to you. Um, you cannot wait until the ball's in your hands and then try to figure out what you need to do. A couple things coming up here at Galen uh, is Catholic Schools Week is always the first week of February. You can look forward to the family picnic that'll be happening during that time. There's uh, Dads and Dining, which I'm sure you will be a part of. Again, I think it's like for, what, the 18th or 19th straight year. Always a fun day. Um, always, it seems like every year fighting with the same few guys. Corey Pitts and I are always trying to fight who gets the cookie because um, <laughs> nobody wants to pass out the fruits or vegetables. It's the cookies that are the main deal. Uh, plug for your mom. Uh, the um, uh, Mission Honduras uh, tailgate is for the uh, Rums in St. Mary's ball game, and it's a free will offering. And what else do we need to know about that, Drew? Do you know what's being served? I do not. Um, I know she's listening tonight, so good thing you threw that out there for her. Um, I'm sure she'll text us. It's always good food every time. And it's for and it's for a good cause. It's for the Mission Honduras trip, so make sure you check that out. That'll be for the Rems and St. Mary's game. Uh, obviously, if you're if you're here and you're or if you're watching, you're a Galen fan. More than likely, you're going to be in the gym that night as Sitzman able to knock down an early three here at the beginning of the third quarter. 39-22 the score. Hughes stolen away by Larissa Poland. Poland quickly ahead, puts up the layup off the backboard. No good. Rebound by Sitzman, and she is fouled from behind by Laney Shucknick, and that's going to be her second. Good job by Rye to run that court there. Not, not just figuring that Larissa was going to make that. Shot is up and Hodgson is fouled and she's a little little bit of a limp, maybe. She's gonna go to the line to shoot two. That foul is the third on Shecknick. Delaney with two quick fouls here. Hodgson puts up the first, rattles around and down. That's gonna be her third point of the ball game. Jay's little mini micro run here to start the uh, third quarter. Puts up the second, knocks it down. I'm sure it was a pleasant talk in the locker room. Uh, looks like they brought some more energy this half. Hughes brings it up the floor. Dribbles right near the logo. Back toward the top of the key. Jay's showing a little bit of zone help and Haley Poland picks up her second. Team's first of this third quarter. Already uh, an adjustment made on Mackenzie Hughes when the screen came, they hedged out to double team to make her pass it. Ball inbounded to Swoyer. Swoyer into the corner to Jacobs. Jacobs dribbles near the top of the key. Picks up her dribble. Gets it down low to Harris. Harris out to Jacobs. 21 on the shot clock. It's gonna be off of Haley Poland out of bounds. Jay's shown a little more fight here at the beginning of the second half. Mackenzie Hughes had pretty good post position right there on Rye. Uh, Nevaeh Hudson did a good job of making sure she sagged in the middle to help out. Ball inbounded to the near side to Harris. Tried to get it down to Hughes. It's going to be poked out, and it's going to remain Akron Westerners basketball with 15 on the shot clock. student section could really do something to affect the end of this possession if they got into it. Harris with it near the logo, now in the corner. It's going to be out of bounds off of Jacobs, and it's going to be Jay's basketball. Timeout, Westerners. It's going to be a 30-second timeout, so we'll be back in 30. You're watching Fuller Digital Solutions. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work. 
last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. Jay's on a little, little bit of a run to start this third quarter. Sitzman kicks it over to, uh, to Poland in the near corner. Pulls up. Three. No good. Rebound by Rolfs. Hughes will kick it ahead quickly up to Jacobs in the far side. Gets it down low. It's going to be a foul on Haley Poland. That's her third. Thought they may, there maybe was a walk before that, but Jay's got away with a few reaches and reach ins in that first half. So, Drew, what do we got for a menu? Mom has texted. The menu is looking like taverns, mac and cheese, chips, and bars. They're serving from five to seven thirty. Perfect night before the St. Mary's game, and we're going to have a tie up down low. It will stay Westerners basketball with six twenty left to go here in the third. Hey, Carolyn, how's it going? Ball inbounded to Harris. Harris out to Hughes near the top of the key. Ball being fought for, and they're going to say Sitzman travel with the basketball as she was rolling on the floor. He'll take that every time. That's more a fight than we showed in that first half. I went to school at Southern Illinois for college back in the early 2000s, and we had a heck of a ball club down there at that time, and the kids were all over the floor all the time as that three-pointer is no good off the back iron. And Jermaine Dearman was one of the one of the guys, he's six seven, and he ended up on the floor all the time. Floor burns the whole bit. It was it was quite the sight to see uh, seeing that uh, as a uh, as a as a college student. Hustle plays like that, they, they're like, they're, they're contagious. One person hustles, the next time the next person is going to be on the, on the floor. Sitzman got the bucket while we were talking. Sitzman with it now. Top of the key over to Haley Poland. Poland dribbles with the left hand. Thought she was going to kick it right to her sister. Subrod instead bounces out to Sitzman. And she hits that three. She now has 13. Jays cut it down to 10. It was 20 at halftime. So in less than three minutes, have cut it down to 10. Hughes with it near top of the key. Kicks it left to Jacobs. Jacobs looking for some help. Top of the key, Rolfs. Now Harris. Hughes pulls up three. No good. Hodgson, right place, right time. Ahead to Sitzman, poked away by Hughes. Hughes, steal, puts it up off the backboard. No good, but Nevaeh Hodgson picks up her third. Not a bad idea by Nevaeh to push the ball, but just a little too much air underneath it. And at least you fouled McKenzie hard enough that she couldn't lay it in as well. Puts up the first and in. She now has 19. First points for the Westerners here in this second half. It's not often you see smiles on the officials' faces, but it's good to see it here tonight. As Hughes puts up the second, knocks it down. She now has 20. Sitzman brings it up the floor. Dribbles with the right hand. Near the top of the key. Corner, Schmidt. Three, good! I took an extended look as well as the official took an extended look and he said three for Emerson Schmidt. Hughes over to Swoyer. Swoyer tries to get it down low, fought for, a ball on the floor. Schmidt comes away with it. Poked away by the Westerners. Sitzman able to get a Hodgson across the timeline. Now Kellen, Kellen pulls it up. Sitzman met by Hughes. She falls to the floor quickly ahead. Hughes trailed by a couple of Jays. Puts up the layup up and in. Mackenzie Hughes with 22, 43, 32. Sitzman between the legs dribble. Kicked over to Haley Poland. No good, rebound by Rolfs. 
Hughes brings it up the floor. Almost stolen away by Kellen. Shot from 18, no good. Rebound by Kellen. Kellen brings it ahead. It's a one on three. Poked away, stolen away. Swoyer gets it to Hughes. Hughes dribbles, near corner, three from Jacobs, no good. Rebound by Schmidt, and Schmidt is fouled by Swoyer. Great box out by Emerson right there, and rewarded with the foul. On the other end of the floor, Drew, would you want your players to pull up, or would you want, in a, in a one on three situation, would you want them to stop, or do you want them to go ahead and drive toward the, uh, drive toward the hoop? That's just a, bas a basketball IQ. Um, if you don't have the numbers, it's, it's time to slow it down and come to a jump stop and wait for your teammates to get down there, uh, which he might have been trying to do, just kind of lost control of the ball. The ball kind of bounced a few times without any really dribbling it. Larissa Poland with it now near the top of the key. Bounce pass, they're going to call a double dribble. This is where the Jays just got to take a deep breath. Came out hot out of halftime. Uh, starting to get a little bit sloppy, a little bit tired. And now the ball is kind of get a little bit sloppy with the ball. Hughes crosses the timeline with a right hand. Passes to Harris. Harris to Sawyer near the top of the keep. Wanted a pass left. Instead dribbles and passes right to Rolfs. That one rims out, no good. Rebound come away with by Jacobs. Pass to the top of the key to Harris. Back to Hughes. Deep three. That one no good. Poling comes away with it and it's going to be out of bounds off of Swoyer. Jay's lucked out there. Once again, didn't have numbers. Uh, tried to attack when there's nothing there. I like that they're trying to make something happen. It's better than not looking at the hoop at all, but um, that's got to be the next step. A little too far for Zubrod, picked off by Hughes. Cross-court pass, bounce pass rather. Count the basket and the foul on Sammy Zubrod. Points go to Hughes, foul goes to Zubrod. 45-32 with 220 assist, left to Assist go. to Hughes. Points to Jacobs on that one. Ah, my bad. Assist is better than the points. That's what I tell my kids anyway. <laughs> Three-point play knocked down by Jacobs. She has 10. I think I just called out the wrong name. I had the right points and everything else, just the wrong name. Sitzman with it near the top of the key, poked away, and we're going to have an offensive foul by Sitzman. Isaiah's first. It wasn't on the push off. I saw the same thing you did. I thought her off arm gave a shove, but they called a moving screen on Zubrod. Top of the key, Swoyer. Swoyer, far corner. Hughes near the top of the key. She dribbles, puts up an underhanded layup and in. Hughes now with 24. It looked like the help defense was there and the help defense left to go guard the three point line. Marissa Poland to the baseline, dribbles back out to Zubrod. Triple teamed back out to, Hale, or to Larissa Poland. Larissa with 15 on the shot clock. And we're going to have a timeout. Brandon Shecker. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. We'll stay here. 48 32 is the score. And the Jays have just kind of struggled here. You know, they came out red hot, and the, the lead is down to 16. It was 20 at the half. Akron relaxed a little bit coming out with a 20 point lead. Uh, Galen came out with a lot more energy. They closed the gap. Um, and then I think it's a combination of Akron realizing they got to put their the pedal to the metal. And then also the Jays maybe tiring a little bit, um, having to sub a little bit, um, with get some fresh legs in there. And I think it's critical that the Jays, they got to cut it down to 10, maybe not by the end of the third quarter, but early in the fourth. You got to get, get within shooting distance. Bounce pass in from Poland, stolen away by Hughes. Hughes the all everything from Akron, bounce pass across, that one up and in for Josie Jacobs. Jacobs now with 12, 50 to 32. Larissa Poland 
Bounce pass out to Sitzman, puts up a three of her own off the front iron and backboard, no good. It's gonna be off of Swoyer and it will be Jay's basketball with 63 ticks left. Westerner sub one in. Jay's starting to settle for some three pointers. A few went in and now they're kind of falling in love with it. Um, wouldn't mind some sort of action to get something to the rim. Pass out to Larissa Poland. Lost possession of it for a second, and she is fouled way out. That's a blessing. That's two shots right there with the new quarters. So the Jays hit the bonus with that, and it's the third foul for Josie Jacobs, sending Larissa Poland to the line. Poland to shoot two. Puts up the first. Off the front iron, no good. 60 clicks left. Surprised to see Nevaeh coming back in with three fouls with a minute left in the third. It's a risk. Oh. As long as she doesn't pick up that fourth, it's a risk worth taking, I guess. Poland puts up the second. No good. Rebound fought for. Hughes comes away with it. Brings it ahead to Harris. Harris, it's swatted. I thought it went off the official. But I was also looking down and then looked back up there for a second as Hughes backs up. 46 on the game clock, 20 on the shot clock. Fairbanks over to Swoyer. Swoyer dribbles with the left hand on the baseline. Shot does not count, but she will go to the line to shoot two, as I believe that one was on Emerson Schmidt. It was on Schmidt. And Swoyer will go to the line to shoot two. First one's up, barely grazed the front iron. Jays play Hinton Friday night. That one will be right here on Fuller Digital Solutions and fullerdigital.net on this Galen Catholic channel. Tip time for the girls game is six o'clock. Boys game to follow as Swoyer knocks that one down. Sitzman brings it up over the timeline. Three point attempt from Paulson, no good. Rebound by Shechnick. I'm sorry, it was by uh, Bo Harris. Hughes will bring up the floor and up over the timeline. Shot clock turned off. Drives, puts it up and in from Hughes. She has 26 on the night, and that might be the high score that we've had all season long for boys or girls. Sitzman puts up the bank. Lucky to get two back there. And Mackenzie Hughes crosses over to the left. Somebody's got to step in and help there. Um, a few steps too late. We'll be back in 60 seconds with the fourth quarter. You're watching Fuller Digital Solutions. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you. So you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right. Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. Looks like Coach Colbeck giving some last minute instructions to Nevaeh Hodgson. As we get ready to start this final quarter. Sitzman kicks it right to Scheitler. JC back to Sitzman. Over to Kellen. Puts up the three, no good. Shechnick came away with the rebound. Bounce pass down low. Sawyer out of bounds. It's going to remain Akron Westerners basketball. Galen Ball's coming up in April, April 20th. It's going to be a night in Nashville. 
course, it's at the convention center. Biggest fundraiser of the year as Squire puts up the shot and is fouled either by Paulson or Kellen. They're going to call it on Grace Kellen. She's had a difficult time trying to grab the ball here tonight and handling the ball with those two fingers taped up. Can't make it easy. It's got to be kind of mental, too. First one in and out, no good. We're, while we're at the line, going to give a quick shout-out to some of the fourth-grade boys listening from home. Uh, Lawson Haggy, Balin Sitzman, and Caden Bickford all, all listening from home. Uh, nice to hear some of those guys watch or that they're watching basketball from home, learning the, more about the game. Sawyer knocked down the second one as that pass is just out of the reach of Kennedy Paulson. I think that might have gone under the bleachers. Somebody's going to have to go crawling. It's not me, you Drew. You have a camera down there. I don't, <laughs> I don't, but I know a cheerleader and a referee went down there. I think he's crawled. He's still go. Oh, I, he's reappeared. <laughs> with the basketball. I think that's the same ref that had to go up on the uh, on the stage. stage. Yeah, A lot of effort. That guy's trying to make, he's earning his money tonight. High effort night. Kicked ahead quickly, up over the timeline. Shecknick, and she double dribble with the basketball. Speaking of officiating, that's one of the harder jobs out there. And if you haven't, or you, if you haven't done it, or you have the inclination that you want to do it, you can reach out to me, but you can also reach out to the state of Iowa. We're short of officials in every sport. If you have a, a sport that you're passionate about, reach out to the IHSAA or the Iowa Girls Union for more information. Sitzman, Ida three, backed up, swatted away. She's able to get the swat. Paulson, Ida three, back to Sitzman. 13 on the shot clock, seven on the game clock. Hodgson, cross court, Kellen along the baseline, puts it up and in, count the basket and the foul. First points for the Jays of this fourth quarter. Down 18 now. Curious to see which, which of these girls are, are willing to fight and try to close this gap. Um, Last time Hackern just broke that press, had three girls jogging back after the press was broken. As a coach, that's telling you we've given up. Um, but maybe this will this shot right here will give us some energy. Zubrod puts the shot up as sits or as Hodgson came away with a rebound, not able to get a second put back as Harris picks it up and gives it to Hughes, brings it up over the timeline with the, in between the legs, dribble, kicks it left. Long two knocks it down. Does Bo Harris? She has her first two points of the ball game, 56 to 36. Sitzman is fouled. Is that Hughes? I'm surprised they called that one on the floor. Oh, it's going to be on 14. Josie Jacobs. That's her fourth. Next one, and she is out of the ball game. We get a late sub in for her. It'll be number 10, Kaberly Fairbanks. Inbounded to Sitzman. Swiped at, and they're going to get the foul on Hughes. I wasn't sure what was going on. I not like that call. No, and she I who might maybe agree with her. Zubrod bounce to Kellen. Sitzman begging for the ball in the corner. Gets it, but she's picked up. Hughes, three, no good. Rebound by Akron. Hughes bringing it up over the timeline. With her right hand, now left, back to the right. 5.55 left to go in the ball game. Into the far corner. Kicked into the near side. Rolfs. Harris. Far side. Rolfs. Three. Knocked down. Rolfs with eight. Extends the lead to 59 36. Jays defend for about 25 seconds. Seemed like it was going to be close to a shot clock violation, and Akron finds a shot. That pass, errant pass, picked up and stolen away by Swarrier ahead to Mackenzie Hughes. She eyes a three off the front iron, no good. Rebound by Sitzman. 
Sitzman slowly brings up the floor for the Jays. Kellen dribbles once, bounces it to Sitzman, puts up the three, no good. Rebound by Rolfs. She hands it off to Hughes, who gets it down low. Swoyer puts up the shot, and she is fouled. I believe that's going to be on Zubrod. Fouls on Zubrod. That's her fourth, team's second of the fourth quarter. First shot is up off the front iron, no good. And almost a hockey line change for the Jays. One noticeable thing, uh, Haley Waldenbach down in Akron really controlled the boards for, for Galen. Um, she was a leading rebounder. It's kind of a, a rebound, a, a team rebounding effort now. Um, I think Rizé has picked up the rebounding quite a bit. Uh, but the board's not... Not uh, plentiful tonight. We've got a full timeout. We'll take it with them back in 60 on Fuller. Catholic in Lamars, Iowa instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academics, service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with EPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. And didn't miss much as Poland brought it up over the timeline and she's fouled in the front court. Bo Harris picks up the foul. It was a full timeout and they took less than the full, so we apologize for not getting back sooner. Appreciate our sponsors for bringing you all of tonight's action. Poland with it now. Larissa near the top of the key just inside the arc, hands it off to Sitzman, eye to three, back out to Larissa Poland. Poland dribbles right, near the logo. Not quite sure who she was passing it to there as Swoyer kind of tipped it out of bounds. He goes right, Isaiah, that was a long pass. What was it, long? Long? Long, long pass. Schmidt brings it up over the timeline. 13 left on the shot clock. Larissa pulling with it now. Bounce pass. Haley moved as she, she had the ball two, passed for her. Two things the Hawkeyes did and didn't do. Throw long passes and throw turnovers. That's, <laughs> if you watched the Hawkeyes this past weekend, same thing. Hughes drives right side of the paint. Puts up a floater. No good. Tries to get her own rebound and said Sitzman comes away with it. Sitzman with a one on four. Waits for a little help. Eye to three corner, Larissa Poland, Larissa over to Haley Poland, Haley three, thought she shuffled her feet but knocked down the three her first points of the night 60 to 39 and Akron is going to have to have to call a timeout here 30 second timeout so we'll quickly take it with them back in 30 on Fuller all the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with you on the call uh, alongside Drew Bickford. Been one of those nights, Drew. Sawyer kicks it out to Hughes. Hughes pulls up for a three off the front iron. No good, and we had a walk under the hoop by Sawyer. Jays trail this one by 21, 331 left to go. 
unless they have an epic fight within them. That one poked away, brought up, and Sitzman commits the foul. Now I believe that is Sitzman's first foul now. It's going to be the team's third. I don't know what Mackenzie's career high is, but she's got to be getting halfway close to it, you would think. I would think so. Hughes, bounce down low. Swung around, Hughes, top of the key. Three off the front iron, no good. Rebound, fought for, and Jacobs comes away with it. Jacobs, swinging arms. Now in the corner, Hughes. Hughes drives toward the basket, and she walked with the basketball. That's what I thought, too. Good thing I was seeing the same thing the officials were seeing. <laughs> Sitzman will bring up the floor for the Jays. Kicks it left to Larissa Poland. Hello to Marty Kurth watching from home, and hello to my friend Jeff watching in Indiana tonight. Appreciate you guys watching. Sitzman, left side of the paint. Bounce pass out to Schmidt. Schmidt over to Larissa Poland. Haley Poland in the corner in front of Mike Meyer. Back out to Larissa Poland near the logo. She drives toward the baseline and double dribbles with a basketball. 2.33 left to go in the game. One sub coming in, and it's Schnecknick. She comes into the ball game for Fairbanks. I'll tell you what, one thing about living in Northwest Iowa, the names are not boring. They are nothing but, if not a challenge. Town to town is always different. Swoyer puts that one up, and Schnecknick tried to put up the uh, putback. Especially when you go just about 20 minutes north of here, Orange City, Sioux Center, you get some of those Dutch names. Gets to be a little bit of a challenge. As Hodgson and Scheitler will come to the ball game. Bounce pass into Larissa Poland. Larissa on the far side. Cross to Scheitler. Scheitler puts up a long two. No good. Rebound fought for. Hodgson tried to get a ball on it. Wasn't able to. Jacobs brings it ahead with a left hand. Jacobs now into the corner. Long two. No good. Rebound fought for. And Sitzman picks up the foul. It's going to be Rye's second. Hughes in the corner, puts up the three, no good, rebound by Haley Poland. Haley ahead to Sitz, Sitzman, Sitzman drives toward the baseline, puts up it, puts it up and in, she now has 17 on the night. 41 to 60. That one's stolen away by Scheitler, Scheitler ahead to Sitzman, Sitzman in the paint and she walked with a basketball. 89 ticks left. One thing you can't take for granted, uh, Mackenzie Hughes, I don't know her personally, but I'm going to bet she puts a lot of time in playing basketball and watching basketball. Her basketball IQ seems very high, um, always understands what's the, what's the right shot, what's the right pass. Um, right there, not, dri not driving into the help defense, but pulling up for the jumper. Um, sometimes that, that, those are the little things that help with basketball IQ. Dr. Jiha almost caught that one in the lap. Poked away by Sitzman. Needs a little bit quicker hands. We'll have to talk to him about that. you think as a doctor, you'd be better trained. Ball inbounded to Hughes in the corner. Hughes, step back three, puts it up, in and out, no good. Paulson with a rebound. She kicks it ahead to Schmidt. Schmidt stops and goes and puts it back out, and we're going to have a foul on the floor. I believe it's going to be on Swoyer. Am I right? I am. Okay. Fifth team foul. We'll put Emerson Schmidt to the line to shoot two. I see a few of my fourth grade boys down here in the front row. I know Brody Jaspers and Braden Konopasik and Bryce Tom's also watching from home. That's 75% of our team. I love that because that, that goes along with the basketball IQ thing, watching basketball, understanding what works, what doesn't work. Um, and basically they coach me in practice during the week then. Akron subs out there. They're starting five as Schmidt puts up the second. No good. Rebound and put back 
by Hodgson, no good. I think a lot of your seventh grade team is here too, Drew. They don't play for me anymore. They moved on to junior high, Matt. <laughs> and we have a travel at the but top they, of the key by Vanderhelm. The girls do soak it in as well. They're a fun group. <laughs> Not like you haven't coached them for the last four years. Bounce pass into Kellen. Kellen brings it up over the timeline, passes to Scheitler. That'll be fun if that happens in a couple years, Scheitler and Scheitler. Hodgson, cross court to Scheitler. Scheitler puts up the three off the iron, no good. I believe it hit the strap or the bottom of the clock, and with less than 35 on the clock, shot clock turns off. Bye-bye, shot clock. Appreciate Ag State for bringing you tonight's clock or our scoreboard. Schuster trucking for bringing you tonight's bottom line as that one's poked away, I believe, by Hodgson. It'll remain Akron Westerners basketball. Vanderhelm to be the inbounder. Cross court, thrown out of bounds, and that one almost knocked over Dr. Otto's popcorn. It's crazy to think in just a couple of years our daughters will be at this level. Doesn't seem that long ago that they were just little third graders playing. You were hurting cats at that point. Almost shuffled feet there by Schmidt. You are just trying to get them to spread out at that point, weren't you? Well, that in third grade, I didn't help that year. I started in fourth. But I watched Colbeck, and I knew he wasn't going to have any hair left if I didn't help out. So now both of us don't have a lot of hair. Final 5.7 seconds. Top of the key. Pulls the trigger on a three. It looked like a knuckle ball. No good. Rebound, Akron puts up the shot, no good. Final from this game is 60 to 41. We will be back to talk about it, question mark, after this on Fuller Digital Solutions. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. And Akron pulled away with this one here tonight. It's on the back of Mackenzie Hughes, who put up 26 of the Westerners' 60 points. It was, first quarter was, was close. Um, Akron now scored Jays by just a few. Um, well, late in the first quarter, they started to pull away. And then the second quarter, it got a lot worse. Um, and then third quarter, and fourth quarter, um, the Jays kind of just hung there with them, about 20-point deficit. And uh, just it seemed like the Jays might close the gap coming in the third quarter. And then Akron picked it back up and got that 20-point lead, and that's where it stayed. Um, interesting to see if Brandon, if we get to hear Brandon tonight, what he has to say about the game uh, from a coach's perspective. Um, I, they don't. They don't. They're not terribly deep. Um, sometimes it doesn't seem like they're hustling, but some of that might be tired legs um, coming out of the break. Uh, maybe a little sluggish too. Difficult uh, game tonight. Of course, this is the second time the Jays took on Akron Westfield. Scoring in the game looked like this: Caberly Fairbanks with three. Swoyer had nine, Bo Harris with two, Josie Jacobs had 12, Mackenzie Hughes led all scorers with 26, Emma Rolfs with eight, and that was scoring for Akron Westfield. For the Jays, Grace Kellen, she had her two fingers taped up on her right hand, she had five, Rizea Sitzman had 17, Haley Pollen with three, 
Emerson Schmidt had three, Kennedy Paulson had three, Larissa Poland with six, and Nevaeh Hodgson with four points. Scoring by quarters looked like this. Jays were only down by five, 18-13 after one. It was 39-19 after two. Jays outscored 21-6 in the second. 53-34 in the third. Jays outscored the Westerners by a score of 15-14. They tied the fourth quarter 7-7. Final score 60 to 41. A little bit of it was a bit of a difficult night for the Jays. They dropped to 1-11. The Westerners advance to 5-3. I think that'll about put a cap on it here tonight, Drew, for the girls' game. Yeah, one thing that happened at Akron that, that uh, didn't happen tonight, Nevea was hit a lot of mid-range jumpers. I think partially it didn't happen tonight because she was in foul trouble early, so her minutes were cut back. Um, with that 2-3 zone, that's going to leave you that mid-range jumper around the free throw line every time when you cut into that middle part of the zone. And the Jays, instead, we, we threw it down into the on the block and got it swiped away many, many times. Um, Sammy Zubrod, um, big, strong girl, tall girl, um, but down low, uh, putting that ball on the ground, Akron just continually swiped it away from her. And she wasn't able to, to get as many shots up as she probably would have liked. Um, but the mid-range jumper for Nevaeh, she, I, I only remember taking it two maybe the whole game. She only ended up with four points, um, something that she made a lot of against that 2-3 in Akron. So um, one thing I do love about Akron as a shooter, pretty soft rims up there. I love that. Um, but she just didn't even take them tonight. Um, so can't just blame it on the rims either. <laughs> We will take a one-minute break and be back after this. You're watching Jays and Westerners on Fuller Digital Solutions and FullerDigital.net. AgriVision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven eight bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling joined by Drew Bickford here tonight. A couple of reminders is Catholic Schools Week coming up. That'll be the first week of February. Make sure you check out galencatholic.org for more details. The diocese is having a vehicle raffle, Drew. $100 for a raffle ticket. Gets you a $50,000 if you're a winner, if you are the winner. You win a $50,000 vehicle voucher from either Knepfler or Rick Collins Toyota. Stipulation. Sounds, like, sounds like a great chance. Stipulation. Too, too late, my wife just bought a vehicle this past week. Stip, stipulations are you must be an, at least 18, year old, an 18, 18 years old, live, uh, live in the state of Iowa, or have a business in the state of Iowa. Tax, title, license, registration, and insurance is all on you. If you are interested in this, contact Amy Jungers in the development office for your chance to win. All 16 schools in the diocese are participating in this, so the, you can calculate out your chances from there. Galen Catholic Ball coming up Saturday, April 20th. That's always a good time. That will be held again at the Lamar's Convention Center. Fine program. It's one of the school's biggest fundraisers of the year. I think Drew and I will be driving tickets to people's houses, uh, as we traditionally do. Um, 
stay tuned. We will have a little bit more on that as the second half of this basketball season comes along. Hopefully we can get Amy Jungers to talk to us about that in a halftime interview. We charge an extra fee if they want Matt and Drew delivering. It's an extra fee to have that dynamic duo deliver, but we can make it happen for the right cost. Well, it's because it's a clown show <laughs> come to your door. If, you, if you're really wanting this clown show to come to your door, great opportunities uh, for uh, things up for grabs. There's a live auction, things like the Dead Campbell Memorial Gym will be up for grabs, as well as parking spaces and many other great items. Uh, I think there were over something, what was it, Drew, something like over 120 items up for grabs last year. There's a lot, a and, lot every year. And there's a lot of one-of-one one items, things that uh, people hand make, classes hand make, so make sure you check that out. Remember to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You'll know whenever we go live, like we will on Friday night, uh, Sands Drew Bickford, as he will be coaching his son's basketball team. But the Jays will take on Hinton Friday night. Six o'clock tip time for the girls. Boys to follow. That'll be right here on this Fuller Digital Solutions channel. Appreciate all of our sponsors. They are local for bringing you tonight's broadcast. If you're interested in becoming one of our sponsors, make sure you check out Fuller Digital Solutions at gmail.com. With that being said, we'll take a quick break. Back after this, you're watching Fuller Digital Solutions and fullerdigital.net. Whether you are combining, hauling grain, or heating your home, fuel powers the fall. When it comes to energy, you need a company who is trustworthy, understands your needs, and who delivers to you. A company who is local, reliable, and affordable. That company is Ag State. Ag State Energy is clean, comfortable, convenient, while staying competitively priced for our customers. Give Laura Sanguin or Seth Duff a call for all your energy needs. MHI and Cuso of Cherokee are on the move, expanding, and in need of residential treatment workers, psychiatric security specialists, and LPNs. We deal with disorders that you can't see. You get to help people who are in desperate need of help, and helping those people actually helps the community as well. The benefits here, I think, are top-notch. That was why I came here. To learn more and to apply, visit governmentjobs.com. Welcome back to the Dove Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford here tonight. Drew, we have a tailgate on Tuesday night. I will be joined by Dean Harper up here in the booth. But a tailgate going on in the cafeteria here. You can check out Ryan's, uh, Ryan's handiwork down in the cafeteria. All the work they've been doing getting the glazed block on the walls. Again, that's that'll be Tuesday night, and it's a tavern night. Uh, taverns, and what else was it? Mac there? and cheese and bars and chips. Sounds like a great night. And if you're lucky, my mom will be present. The Kaylin Catholic legend. You can, hey, listen, it, it, it's it's worth every penny you pay <laughs> at, at the free will offering to see... Carolyn Bickford. Carolyn's one of my favorites. Now that's right behind Neil, because Neil's my other favorite. Not, well, I don't know if Neil's listening tonight or not. Well, so these suck up we, points we, might not be getting you far. We know that Mary's got it on. Mary's definitely turned it on for him. <laughs> that, that being said, I think Neil turned it on once for himself. And then I think we made we gave, we kind of picked on him a little bit. <laughs> I heard about that later on. It was before Christmas break because at their house I didn't hear about that. <laughs> oh, I think your I think your mom's texting us. So we'll we'll take a break and have another laugh. Take a look at these fine sponsors you're watching for today. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you, so you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. 
With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right. Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. And Drew, just a little, I'm going to give a little plug here, and you can chime in whatever you want here, is is uh, the, there is still a very high need for officials. We're lucky every, every night that we're out here, we get three quality basketball officials out on the floor. And, and officiating is not an easy job. Uh, there's a lot of training that does go into it. Yearly there is training. There is a yearly test that goes out from the NFHS, the National Federation of High Schools. Um, a lot of the rules are homologated by the Federation. Um, it's part of the reason why there's differences in football rules from college to high school and NFL. Uh, basketball rule differences. It all comes down from the from the Fed rules. So when you think a lot of it's coming down from uh, from Boone, Iowa, it's not. But that's where the two associations are located at. Um, it's a little bit of a steep price to get into it, but there's a lot of uh, guys and gals that are willing to uh, to give you some of their hand-me-down stuff in order to, to to get you going on the track of of officiating whether you're interested in softball or baseball or if, or if your jam is basketball or you like football or if you prefer the, uh, the the creature comforts of the uh of the volleyball court um there's there's opportunities at every level uh i know that jeff kramer is always looking for officials to uh, to, to help fill in especially at the lower levels of sports it's it's a very tough job um and really i don't think People in the stands always realize how tough it is until you're in that situation and you're actually the one refing. Um, the action as the kids get older and older. When they're younger, it's tough because what do you call, what do you not call? As they get older, it gets quicker. Um, but um, very, um, as somebody who enjoys, enjoys sports, once you're old enough and you can't play, and if you stop, if you're not coaching, it's one way to kind of get you back into the sport. Um, so I, I just enjoy being around the sports any way I can. And I don't ref often as much as you do, Matt. But I do enjoy when I'm out there. Um, I'm definitely no pro. But it's it definitely need more refs, um, parents, coaches. And if you're young, if you're if you're just out of high school, you just got done playing, and you're not playing at the next level, it's the perfect opportunity because you still have a passion for the sport. It's a great way to make some money over the summer if you put if you don't do anything. I don't want to say don't do anything. If you don't have another summer job or an internship lined up, baseball is a great way to make money. Softball is a great way to money. A great way just to stay involved with the sport you love. Yeah, and you can. I, it, I, I I don't show it because my my shape is more of a round shape, but it will help you stay in in some kind of shape um, so that you can you know keep your your physical fitness that you want to keep. And when your wife's are not nice like ours, gets us back out of the house. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> I did not say that at all. <laughs> I'm going to turn, turn off Drew's mic here, and I'm going to plug in to our public address announcer as we get ready for starting lineups for tonight's boys basketball game. Campbell Memorial Gym here at Galen Catholic for our second game in tonight's varsity doubleheader. Let's extend another special welcome to our guests, the Westerners from Akron Westfield. Galen Catholic Schools encourage positive sportsmanship and behavior at the game tonight. By practicing good sportsmanship, you will help make tonight's game one to remember. Let's give a hand for our officials for tonight's game. Kurt Strouth, Joel Kreienbrink, and Brad Van Rokel. Now let's welcome the coaches. The Westerners are coached by Chad Clay, assisted by Gordy Johnson and Nick Jacobs. The Jays are coached by Ryan Wilchin, assisted by Eric Kellen and Alec Langle. 
And now for the starters, for the Westerners, a senior, number four, Carter Wilkin. For the Jays, a senior, number two, Trevor Teal. For the Westerners, a senior, number 11, Ashton McCulley. For the Jays, a sophomore, number four, Dylan Lubin. For the Westerners, a senior, number 12, Leighton Cook. For the Jays, a senior, number 10, Jackson Kramer. For the Westerners, a senior, number 32, Jackson Marnock. For the Jays, a senior, number 12, Landon Ryder. For the Westerners, a senior, number 34, Casey Nielsen. And for the Jays, a senior, number 30, Gabe Wilchin. When it's time to choose a bank, the choice is easy. Prime Bank is the bank for you. With all the conveniences you want in a bank, including a mobile app and online account opening, Prime Bank also offers you pick checking with no monthly fees or minimum balances. And the best part is you get paid for everyday banking transactions. That's right, Prime Bank's you pick checking. We pay you for your everyday checking account transactions. Choose Prime Bank. It's the bank for you. Earn more your way with Prime Bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym as we get set for tonight's opening tip controlled by the Westerners. McCauley comes away with it. Passed up over the front, into the front court to Wilkin. The ninth score bar brought to you by Ag State. The bottom line brought to you by Schuster Trucking. Wilkin now near the, in the near corner, Marnock. Far corner, dribble, stop. Wilkin puts up a three in and out, no good. Rebound by Trevor Teal. Ryder. Now top of the key is Lubin. Lubin to Wilchin. Wilchin put up a two off the back iron. No good. Rebound by Jackson Marnock. Marnock ahead to Wil Wilkin. Cook. Now top of the key. Man, talk about a size match, mismatch there at the top of the key for a second. Jay showing, what, a 2-3 zone here, Drew? It looks like they might be in a, yeah, 2-3 Take your turns falling back. Just a little bit of an adjustment. They're trying to keep the ball out of the paint as, they, as good as, as well as they can. Carson Arns being hurt. That's a huge loss for the Jays when you're facing 6'7, six, 6'6 six, six out of Akron. Layton Cook. Size. Layton Cook with the opening three of the game. Kramer to Wilchin, top of the key. Left to Trevor Teal. Poked at for just a second. Trevor across to Lubin. Lubin gets a cutting Wilchin, puts it up and in. Gave Wilchin a nice backdoor reverse. Westerners lead this one 3-2. Quickly down low, up and in for Casey Nielsen. The Jays are going to have to really play team defense to keep that ball out of the paint. Lubin, reverse layup, no good. Rebound. Ahead, Wilkin gets down low, stolen away by Trevor Teal. Trevor brings it up over the timeline with the left hand between the legs dribble. Kicks it left to Ryder. Ryder stops over to Kramer. Kramer bounce pass into Wilchin. Wilchin fade away from 10, no good. Rebound by Cook. Cook will bring it up with the right hand. Up over the timeline, 5.33 left to go here in the first. McCauley to Cook, or to, uh, I'm sorry, to Wilkin. Three point thought about by Cook. Now steps back, puts it up off the front iron, no good. Rebound by Lubin. Lubin over to Kramer. Ryder, Gabe. That one is a foul by Casey Nielsen. I guess that's, a, that's one way to give him foul trouble. That'd be great because they are some big old trees down there. 
And they play that way too. They both rebound the ball very, very well. Wilchin at the line to shoot two. Puts up the first, knocks it down. He is responsible for all three of the Jays' points here tonight. Jackson's a little bit higher score than Casey, uh, but both rebound well, about eight rebounds a game. Um, I know Jackson is a decent three-point shooter, shooting about 43% on the, on the season so far. Wilkin with it now, kicks it to the corner, long three, Cook, no good, rebound. Ahead to Ryder. Ryder with it now. Out to Wilchin, top of the key, guarded closely. Ryder walk with the basketball as he tried to kick it over to Kramer. Preppy night in the student section tonight. A little bit of a lacking student section. Students not quite back in session yet from Christmas break. As Wilkin brings it up over the timeline, pushes it right with a right hand, McCauley. McCauley, cross court pass to Cook. Cook drives, gets bumped in the paint. Three point attempt, swatted at, partially blocked, gets his own rebound, blocked by Kramer. Picked up by Wilchin and ahead to Lubin. Lubin quickly ahead to Kramer. Kramer was going to kick it right, instead kicked it left. Hand off, back to Lubin. Lubin thought about getting the screen down to Wilchin. Instead, Kramer with it on the near side. Tries to feed it down low, a little too high for Nolan Teal. Carter Wilkin ahead. Jays have numbers as Wilkin kicks it out. Drives the baseline, puts it up, and is fouled is Leighton Cook. I think that was clean up top, but a lot of body underneath. Foul's going to be on Jackson Kramer. That's his first, team's first. First free throw is up and good for Leighton Cook. He now has four. It's 6 4. McCauley goes out of the ball game. Didn't catch the jersey number of his sub that came in. It's 15 McKee. As Cook knocks down the second one, he has five of the Westerners, seven points. Ryder with it now. Near the top of the key, Wilchin kicks it left to Nolan Teal. Nolan drives, he's in the paint, and he was fouled by Reagan McKee. His first, team second. That's one thing that Trevor does really well. Uh, or Nolan does really well, not Trevor. Uh, really attacks size-wise. He's got some length, but he doesn't. He's he's pretty lanky. Uh, but he, he could eat really a couple more steaks. Yeah. <laughs> Wilchin floats that one up. Balls fought for. Wilchin comes away with it. Gets it to Nolan Teal. Bounce pass in. Dane Lehman puts up the shot, and he is fouled. That one's going to be on Jackson Marnock. That's his first, team's third. Hello to his mom, Mel. She's watching from South Dakota here tonight, I believe. Teaching over there, and Dean gets his first point of the ball game. And we're gonna have a quick foul here by Nolan Teal. A little bit of a foolish foul by Nolan. You like hustle plays, but not wasting fouls when down a few guys. Jay showing a little extended pressure. Able to get up over the timeline in time. Cook able to get it back out. Wilkin back to Cook. Thought about a three, back to Wilkin. Ball being swung around well now by the Westerners. Wilkin, Cook in the far corner. Three minutes left to go, and that ball is... Is it a foul or is it a kick? Leave a kick. I think they're going to call a kick. It looked like he was kicking at it. I didn't know if he made contact or not. Ball quickly inbounded. Wilkin with a three. No good. Rebound quickly put back by Leighton Cook. He now has seven. 
9-5 in favor of the Westerners. Landon, or uh, sorry, Trevor Teal gets to the corner. Gabe, bounce pass into Dane, kicks it out, Nolan Teal. Nolan now drives toward the baseline. Trevor, three, good! Trevor Teal with the corner three. It's 5-8. Cook gets it up over the timeline to McKee. McKee in the far corner. Back to Cook. Being swung around well. Thought about a three. Bounce past Wilkin at the top of the key over to Cook. Hit by Wilchin. Ball being swatted at. Wilkin. That one, man, that one almost looked like the perfect iron shot. When you're trying to lay that thing up on the green, he had just the right amount of spin on it where it just died at the back of the uh, back of the rim. Trevor gets it to Dane. Dane in the paint. Gets it over to Lubin. Lubin drives, puts it up and in. Take. Dylan Lubin with two, an impressive speed by that youngster. Shot up, going the other way. Rebound by Dane Lehman. Dylan Lubin showing some chops here. The sophomore. Just wish he had a few more inches up on him. Nolan over to Trevor. Trevor step back. Trevor, and we're going to have an offensive foul on Dane. And Dane just says, what did I do? Just went to roll and maybe was moving just a smidge on that screen. Boy, Dylan lacks height, but man, is he quick. And his eyes are always up. He's looking to make the right pass. Yep, for sure. 117 left to go here in the quarter. Terpstra, he's got it now, kicks it right. Back to Terpstra, just gets it up over the timeline. Terpstra kicks right to McCauley. McCauley back out near the top of the key to Terpstra in the corner now. Cook drives the baseline, puts it up and in. Leighton Cook with nine. 13-10, Jays trail by three. Lubin puts up a reverse layup, no good. Rebound by Nielsen. Nielsen pushed it to Cook, who brought it up over the timeline. Six second shot clock to game clock. Corner, thought about a three, did Allard. Cook over to McCauley. Now Allard, that one swatted at by Nolan Teal. Jays in his own defense. Down low, puts up the shot. Lehman picks up the foul. Terpstra picks up two, trying for the traditional three-point play. Dane Lehman now has two. And that's with, gonna hurt the Jays. With the size advantage that Akron has, I think you'll see a few of the bigs get in foul trouble for Galen as they're trying to be physical and trying to keep them out of the paint. Um, Jays looks like they're in a 3-2 zone. Um, just trying to keep those two post guys down in the lane, trying to plug that up. Um, the ball moves that quick, though. That's pretty tough to rotate that quick. That was a good ball movement by Akron. Might be a difficult night for the Jays' small size here tonight. Free throw is good for Terpstra. Three-point attempt, Trevor Teal, no good. Picked up by Cook has it now. Spots, three, no good off the front iron. And Akron leads this one 16 to 10 after one. You're watching Jays and Westerners on Fuller Digital Solutions and fullerdigital.net. Catholic in Lamars, Iowa instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academics, service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. 
Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build. And they work with EPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. Welcome back to the Dub Campbell Memorial Gym. Jays trail this one 16 to 10 after one. And so far it hasn't been the bigs that have been hurting us for Akron. Leighton Cook has nine, um, over half of his average on the season, averaging about 16 points per game. Shot, no good, rebound, fought for on the floor, 34 Langle, he'll travel with a basketball. Seen that in the girls' game, and now we see it in the boys' game. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Ag State. Shot clock in the right corner, and Schuster brings you tonight's bottom line. Akron able to get it up over the timeline. With it now is McCauley. Now on the corner, three. Oh, thought about it was Allard. Now he pulls the trigger on the three. No good. Rebound. Fought for. Got by Cook. Cook puts it up. No good. Rebound. Off four, and he is fouled, and the extra shooting is Casey Nielsen. Toughest part about playing the zone is who do you box out, and it's who's ever nearest to you. But it, it's tough. It's not you're not designated to one certain person. Um, Jay's not really boxing out right there. Trevor Teal tried to out jump somebody, and he had position, but rather than put a body, he tried to out jump him. Nielsen picks up his third point of the ball game. Puts up the second, off the front iron, no good. Rebound by Kramer. Ryder back to Teal, puts it up for three, no good. Rebound by Kramer, throws it away. Dr. Jiha said, wasn't his foot on the sideline? <laughs> Ref said no. Swatted at by Kramer, we're gonna have a double contact and it's gonna be Akron basketball. Casey Nielsen will inbound the basketball. Seven minutes left to go. A quick shoot by Allard and a foolish foul by Kramer. You got to close out on control on the shooters. Picks up his second, and it's going to send him to the line to shoot three Eric, for Eric Allard. I thought it was three. For, for a second, the, uh, the low official was only signaling two. First free throw attempt for Allard. Is off the front iron, no good. 17-10 the score, 6.58 left to go in the second. Second of three is in for Allard, he has one now. Boy, everybody's sluggish coming back from the break, even the student section sitting down, you don't see that very often. I think it's until the Jays score a basket. Oh, for each quarter? Uh-huh. I think. Allard knocks down his third free throw attempt. Nolan brings it across the timeline, passes his brother Trevor, now to 34 Langle, back out to Nolan Teal. Nolan near the top of the key, now dribbles to the top of the key, in the paint, right side of the lane, puts it up, no good, fought for, rebound by 34 uh, Langle. Nolan Teal again in the paint, and they're going to say walk with the basketball. I thought it could have been called for a push also. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a little bit of a blocking, but he did shuffle his feet before he took his two long strides. And when we say long, he's got big old long legs. He's got long strides. Able to get it across the timeline. McCauley, it's swatted at by Nolan Teal over to Leighton Cook. In the corner, thought about a three, didn't pull the trigger. Over to McCauley. McCauley, cross court, Allard, jumper, no good. Here's a good box out. And we're going to have a foul on Jack Terpstra. One thing that's nice to see so far for the Jays, they're, they're playing a little bit of two thirds court uh, pressure. And Atkins been doing a really good job of moving the ball and getting it to the middle of the zone. Uh, but Galen is hustling back every time after their press is broken. And I haven't seen Akron really 
capitalize on breaking the press yet. 34 Langle in the corner to Wilchin. Wilchin, shot fake, drives the baseline. He dribbled out of bounds. Lubin is going to come into the ball game as well as Lehman, and we're going to see Langle and Trevor Teal have a seat. Carter Wilkin will bring it up the ball, will bring it up the court for the Westerners. Wilkin over to Cook. Swatted away. Ball was kicked at one point. We're going to have a fight for the ball on the ground. It's going to be Jay's basketball. Possession arrow is such a fickle mistress. You want you want to have the possession arrow, but you're uh, you're always kind of fighting for that basketball. I understand the safety aspect of it too. That ball almost thrown away, picked up by. Speak, speaking of refing, it's kind of interesting to see how long certain refs will call it, blow the whistle immediately on a held ball, and some let it go a little bit. Wilchin knocked down that three. 13-19, it's a little bit of a, I don't want to say it's a personal preference, but it is a little bit. It's a little bit like when you're umpiring how quickly a ball or a strike is called as that one hits the bottom of the rim from Monarch. Marnock, I'm sorry. Three from the corner is good from Landon Ryder, and Landon is now on the board. 19-16, Jays now within three. Have never led in this ball game. Lubin able to get that one. Ryder, no good. It's going to be off of Nolan Teal. Nolan was looking for the foul. Hello to Brian Kolbeck watching us here tonight. As Cook brings it up over the timeline to Wilkin. Back to Cook in the corner. Back to Wilkin. McCauley, cross court, three, good. Leighton Cook, his first points of the second quarter. He has, we have 22 here tonight. He has got just over half of them. Nolan Teal. Gets it to Lubin, Lubin and a moving screen from Dane Lehman. That's Lehman's third. That one chalked it up to Dylan Lubin. Kind of crossed over and didn't really wait for that screen to, to be set. As a screener, you're trying to help out that ball uh, handler, but the ball handler has to help out the screener by making sure he's ready. Just spying Mike Meyer down there right next to the Rick Fox seat. Him and Foxy used to sit down there all the time and talk about the games. He's kind of sitting guard next to it. In the corner, Cook kicked it back out. Cook has it again. Deep three. Man, oh, man. 15 points. It's 25 to 16. They were able to pull it out just like that. Nolan Teal to Lubin. Lubin gets it in the paint. Wilchin puts it up. Knocks it down. Jays hit a couple threes, close within three. And Akron fires two threes to pull it back out in nine. Back to seven now, though. Cross court pass now on the corner is Wilkin. Back out, McCauley. Kicked it to Cook. Cook now double team. Back to McCauley. McCauley back to Cook. Top of the top of the key, and he travels with the basketball. 2.59 left to go before half. Students made a little bit more noise as Channel 9 walked by the student section. Ryder. Coach, Wilch Coach Wilchin has to be happy with the game plan. They've executed perfectly. Um, Jackson, Monarch has, oh, has two points currently, but Leighton Cook is making them pay right now. I think you got to make a choice on what you want to kill you. It's kind of a double-edged sword. Wilchin gets it to Landon Ryder, puts up a long two off the back of the iron there, no good. Rebound by Marnock. Ahead to Wilkin, now in the corner, Terpstra. 
Marnock kicked it right to Wilkin. Wilkin, cross court, corner, thought about a three. Instead, drive, drives, floats in the lane and good for Leighton Cook. He now has 17 pesky points and we've got a timeout for Galen. We'll take it with him back in 30 on Fuller. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance Water Heaters. Hoping that he's not making them. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. And Drew, Leighton Cook is, is the J killer here tonight. The J is trying to, with Carson Arns being out, we knew that was going to be a huge loss. One of my favorite players. Uh, kind of just Mr. Fundamental. Average about nine a game, five, five rebounds, a couple blocks, a couple assists. Um, young kid, just hurt his knee a little bit, and um, you knew the game plan was going to be try to slow down the bigs without Carson Arns, but Leighton Cook is doing a great job of making a pay. Double dribble by Dylan Lubin, and it's going to be a turnover for the Jays. Turnovers have also killed the Jays here tonight. Wilkin inbounds to Cook, back to Wilkin. Wilkin will walk it up, jog it up, slowly trot it up over the timeline. Passes left to Terpstra. Terpstra gets Cook, uh, gets Cook. Cook to Wilkin. Down low is Marnock. Marnock puts up a shot off the backboard. No good. Trevor Teal's fighting him. Rebound. Fought for. Picked up by Ryder. Over to Wilchin, who will bring it up. We heard in the halftime of the girls game that Gabe has some torn ligaments in that thumb, so he's going to have to wear a brace for the rest of the season as Wilkin brings up the ball up the floor. McCauley has it now over to Wilkin, directing traffic. Over to Terpstra, Terpstra in the paint is Marnock. Marnock puts it up off the backboard and in. That's the first two points of the game for Jackson Marnock. He had, the team has 29, 29, 18. 49 seconds left to go in the first half. Wilchin pulls up for a three off the back iron, no good. Gets his own rebound, dribble drive, puts up a shot, and fouled by Leighton Cook. That's his first foul, team's third of the quarter. That was one of those in-between calls. Um, I think Leighton Cook was just a little too far under the hoop to give him the benefit of the doubt on that charge. 41 ticks left to go in the half. Wilchin puts the first one up and in. Gabe now has 11 on the night. 29-19, Dillon goes out of the game. Gabe puts up the second, knocks it down. Still 100% from the line on the year. Only shot 17. I wasn't going to say that while he was shooting. You know um, that's the announcer's jinx. I didn't want to be blamed for that. Brandon's right behind me, and he would have let me have it probably. Wilkin over to Terpstra. Terpstra passes right. To McCauley. McCauley top of the key back to Terpstra. Terpstra trying to get it down low. Does. The big man walked. Hooked committed him. the charge. He hooked him with his left hand. Marnock with his second. 20.7 left. See if the Jays are going to be content with one or if they're going to go quick. Ryder brings it up over the timeline. Just up over the timeline. That one tipped. Teal with it now. Five left on the game clock. Spins in the paint. Puts up a jumper off the front iron. No good. You could tell he did not look comfortable with that shot. And after the first half, Jays trail this one 29 to 20. We'll be back in 60 seconds on Fuller Digital Solutions. 
Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment at the right price. Utilize one of our convenient pre-built packages or build and customize your own with our JD Buy Online site. Need financing? No problem. Apply online in five minutes or less. Our team is ready to find the package for you. Don't settle for less. Shop in-store or online at agrivisionequipment.com. Welcome back to the Dev Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling here with Coach Brandon Shecker. And Coach, another difficult game tonight. And seemed like you guys were making quite the comeback there in the third quarter. Yeah, the girls really came out with some uh, hustle, a uh, ton of effort right there, especially on the defensive end, um, starting the third quarter. Super happy with that. So we started off the game, I thought, with some energy. Um, and then we came out of that third quarter, starting that third quarter out of half uh, with, uh, with a ton of energy. And unfortunately, we just didn't have enough. And again, I, you know, we're not built to come back down 20 points. Um, you know, going in at half down 20 kind of hurts. Uh, but be able to get it down to 9, 10 points right there in the start of third quarter, it made me feel pretty good, you know, just just to be able to have that uh, fight left in them. Mackenzie Hughes, kind of the uh, the dagger in everybody's heart here tonight. Who? 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 <laughs> yeah, that, that girl um, that girl can shoot. Uh, but Not only can she shoot, she plays she plays some pretty good defense, she, too. But, but she... She plays a lot of basketball. She she works on her craft, and and you can tell. You know, this is her sport. Uh, she's good at it. She puts in a ton of the effort um, in the off season, and it's paying huge dividends for her uh, during the season. And you know, she she's a great kid and a, a great athlete. And I uh, I wish her the best. I wish she wouldn't go off uh, when we're playing her. Uh, she could back off just a smidge or miss a free throw or something. Uh, but yeah, she's she's a really nice player. You guys had a rough end of the 2023 uh, 2023 year against St. Mary's. You guys ended up with just two girls on the bench uh, at the end of that at the end of that game, and, and uh, Haley Lubin's still out for tonight. Yeah, and actually Grace just came back. Uh, she was only to practice with us uh, the last day or so, um, so she just got cleared. So she wasn't she missed you know the, the first three or three practices coming out of Christmas break too. So uh, it hopefully uh, another week. And we'll have Lubin back as well, and then we'll be as full, as fully staffed as we can uh, from a roster standpoint. But yeah, it was a, a brutal end uh, playing with seven girls that last game. But uh, perfect time for a nice break uh, to get most of our girls back and healthy and ready to go. And hopefully, we'll stay healthy the rest of the season. You could see a little bit of the discomfort that Grace had with those two fingers kind of taped up. I had, had a little trouble handling the ball with the with the two fingers, I think, taped and up. And that was my biggest concern with her coming back is just not enough ball handling. You know, you're not just used to handling a ball when two fingers are taped and, and it's her dominant hand. Um, but actually, her shot actually hasn't been that bad with it. It's just the ball handling. So she'll continue to work on that. And you could just tell the, the thing that I saw tonight was she just a, hadn't practiced in the last three days where the other girls had that opportunity she hadn't and uh I, you know i think uh the next few days getting some practice time in another game under her belt and i think that she won't even have a worry about the fingers after that hinton comes here on friday night and um and hinton comes here on friday night yeah hinton pretty good too <laughs> and then uh then we turn around i think we got run to st mary's again too so yeah no N nothing like an easy schedule coming up. Uh, the road doesn't get easier. It doesn't. It, and, and, and that's that's actually not a bad thing. I, I love playing tough games. You know, my outlook uh, coming in here with Hinton and Remsen St. Mary's is I just want to continue to improve. I want to continue to find things that we can build on um, from the last game or the last practice. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not worried about record anymore. You're sitting here worried, you know, just focused on, hey, girls, just – just keep doing those things that we need to do. We're going to have some tough games, but we also have some winnable games. And I know that's what these girls are really looking for is they're just looking for a winnable game. And, um, you know, I thought we had an opportunity tonight. We just, 
we got out on a really good start, which we haven't been in a long time, and then and then we we just have too many down moments. Um, we we got to find a little more consistency. Not trying to project out too far, but how much are you looking at the next month and a half or, or so trying to build momentum for the next season? Not looking past the seniors that you do have this year. How much of this are you trying to uh, build build some momentum for your younger your younger girls? You know, uh, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, and I think a lot of people potentially in this position would would – look at that and say hey no offense seniors but i'm going to focus on getting everybody ready for for next season and that's that's not our focus our focus is actually tomorrow night practice um we're not looking a month down the uh, down the road we're not actually looking at postseason right now we're not even looking at next year um honestly i'm, I'm focused on practice tomorrow night and what we need to do to continue to to work on things and keep these girls uh mentality focused on what we can do to to, to play Hinton on Friday night. And I'm not even worried about Hinton as of right now. I'm, I'm just focused on what can we do tomorrow night uh, to continue to get these mentally, you know, get these girls mentally stronger, um, physically a little bit better in shape. You know, you could, I could really tell coming out of Christmas that, and, and they admitted it, Coach, we didn't do anything for the last week. Um, so we need to get back into physical shape and get up and down the court. And that, that's really my, you know, that's really my focus right now is uh, nothing else really matters. It's just the next game mentality. Because, honestly, that's what we have. Um, I don't know what we'll have next year. I don't know what we'll have come uh, postseason. What I do know is we have Hinton come to town Friday night, um, and any night is an opportunity to, to play some more basketball. And any given night, you can ask anybody. Um, Hinton has an off night. We have an on night. And you, you take down Hinton. You know, you just don't know. And so I don't want to look past any of that. I don't want to look at next year. I just want to look at what can we do to prepare for Hinton Friday night. Well, it'd be fun if you can shock a team, wouldn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. That'd, it'd be fun. Uh, you know, it'd just be fun to be competitive against them. You know, they're, they're a great ball, uh, ball squad this year. Leary has them playing well. Um, you know, Renzo St. Mary's next week. They've obviously we played them right before Christmas. They're having a great season. So just to be competitive with them and, you know, obviously improve on what we did last time against Renzo St. Mary's. And obviously we'll have Hinton a second time this year too. But um, just just to be competitive and, ha and have a fun game, be, be in it. Um, you know, like tonight when we got them down to 9, 10 points coming out of that halftime into the third quarter, you know, it, it was fun having that moment. And I thought the girls enjoyed it a little bit. We just didn't enjoy it enough. We didn't have enough to keep going. So we need to continue to build on those. Coach, appreciate you joining us. We'll see you on Friday night Thanks, after Matt. the Hinton game. Appreciate it. You are watching Fuller Digital Solutions and Fuller Digital. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work, last, and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling alongside Drew Bickford. And Drew, we had a little bit of an extended stay with Coach Shecker, and he gave us some great insight to the uh, to, to the rest of the outlook for the girls' season and um, and kind of the, I don't want to say difficult road, but a little bit of the difficult road that they have uh, ahead of them. Just looking, looking for improvement every game, um, seeing who's willing to improve, who's going to keep fighting. Obviously, the record isn't what they were hoping for, um, but each game matters because at the end of the season, they're all going to make the tournament. So improving, trying to be ready for when that tournament time comes. Tournament's just kind of a funny deal, too, because it's, such a, it's just a one-game playoff every single time. There's, there's so much variance that goes into it, and, you know, captain variance comes out and, and, uh, and, and can nip those top seeds uh, in, in situations like that. It's just getting hot at the right time. That's the key. Right. 
Speaking of getting hot at the right time, Leighton Cook is, man, if he was any more on fire, we might have to call Chief Shepard uh, to come out, come out here and put him out. He has 17 points here in the first half. Gabe Wilson stepped up nicely with 12 points in the first half. I'm sorry, he has 10. Why do I have him with 12? At any rate, as we get started with the second half, Marnock has it near the free throw line, gets it out to Cook. The aforementioned Cook is fouled on the floor. I believe that was Nolan Teal on the foul. It was. Get back. That's his second team's first to the second half. I had Gabe with 11. So all three of us are different in that category. We're, we aren't the official scorekeepers as Ashton <laughs> McCauley puts that one up to start the second half. 31 to 20. Westerners in control of this ball game and Kramer walks with the basketball. He was fed nicely in the paint. Forgot to dribble. The home stands are Clearing out quickly here with 7.31 to go here in the second, or the second half rather, or 7.31 to go in the third quarter. My goodness, you think the Christmas vacation them still on it. Nolan Teal comes up with that. Nolan passes right to 34 Langle, to Wilchin. Wilchin spins out of the paint, puts it up and in. So depending on who you're listening to, I have Gabe with 14 points. 13 and 14, he has 12, 13 or 14. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Nielsen over to Marnock. Gets it to Wilkin. Gets it down low. Puts it up. No good. Rebound by Jackson Kramer. Nolan Teal quickly over the timeline. Those are some interesting colored shoes. Is Kramer just inside the arc. No good. Rebound fought for. Pulled up by Wilchin. Nolan Teal is fouled going to the hoop. And I believe that one's going to be called on Ashton McCauley. I think that was a carryover. He missed a layup on one end and kind of let it carry over to the other end of the court. Teal gets ready to put up the first to two. Off the back iron, doesn't settle, no good. 6.38 left to go in the third. Teal puts up the second, knocks it down. Nolan now with one. I can confidently say he has one point on the night. As Wilkin brings it up for the Westerners. Passes it left to, McCar uh, to McCulley. Bounce pass to the top of the key. Nielsen tries to feed Marnock down low and just out of, the, out of his reach. Try to go big to big, high low. Yes, over the top. He had Gabe sealed and there was no help there. Lubin will bring up the basketball for the Jays. Lubin over the timeline with a left hand, stops, kicks right to, to Gabe, who count that for three. It's now 26-31. Gabe with a question mark points. McCauley with it now. Stolen away by Nolan Teal. Nolan with a little bit of a two. Now he's got three on three, puts it up off the bank. No good. Rebound. Fought for. They could have called a jump ball. Didn't. Quickly ahead to Cook. Cook brings it up over the timeline with a right hand. Now in the paint. Trips. Puts it up or, uh, to Nielsen. Nielsen puts it up and in. Nielsen allegedly with five. It's 33 to 26. Gabe pulls up from three and knocks it down. Gabe Wilchin with 20. Up, or something. <laughs> Cook near the top of the key pass left to Nielsen Nielsen cross court to McCulley McCulley with it now cross court gets a runner from Nielsen puts it up no good Kramer commits the foul it's Kramer's third Galen went man to man trying to slow down Layton and now uh, looks like Jackson Kramer's Guarding Casey, but he's trying to help Gabe when he can. Okay, so Casey, look for Casey to get some most open looks now. Nielsen picks up that free throw. He now has six. 34 29. 
puts up the second, knocks it down. 35-29. Hey, J uh, Drew, is JJM full? JJM still has some uh, opening spot, open spots left. We have um, one or two sixth grade spots and a seventh grade spot left. So if you're looking to fill it, I do know Akron's boys tournament is the same weekend. We played in that last year. Now that I'm uh, running JJM here, I can't get my boys up to play at Akron. Terpstra ahead to McCauley. McCauley back to Terpstra. Through the hands, able to be picked up by Cook. He's through the hands of Marnock. McCauley, that one poked away by Lubin. Lubin's got a one on two. Stays on the left side of the paint, swatted away. It's going to be off of 34 Langle. And the student, se student section arguing. Official holding his ground and the inbounds is going to be right in front of the uh, student section. Ball inbounded to Wilkin. Wilkin will bring it up over the timeline. Passes left to Terpstra. Eye to three for just a second. Now passes right to McCauley. Gets it down low to Marnock. And we're going to have an offensive foul. Offensive foul is on Leighton Cook. That's going to be his second, team's second of the third quarter. Well, I thought Gabe, was, Gabe gave a little push once he, he got beat coming across from block to block and gave a little extra push. Nolan Teal just left of the arc. Ooh, carried the basketball. Man, he pushed that thing so hard through the floor, it bounced up over his head. It was all he could do to try to recover. Pushed that ball down and totally whiffed coming back. A I, can whiff. I can say Akron's basketball tournament is the same weekend, February 16, 17. I think Nathan Harris runs that. I'm a lot better guy than Nathan Harris. <laughs> so you want to come to Galen before you do Akron. I hope Nate's listening tonight. Marnock. Mar Count the basket and the foul for Terpstra. Five for Terpstra. And the foul's going to be on 12. That's going to be on Landon Ryder. That's going to be his first. Team's third. I personally like Akron, so. <laughs> Free throw attempt, no good. <laughs> Rebound by Marnock. Barnock walked with the basketball as he tried to drive the baseline. I say that as an official who's going to go uh, do some baseball there this summer. They put, they do run a, a good tournament too. Played up there for with the Bulldogs a few years and the Jays last year. They do a good job. Ryder brings it up over the timeline. Hand off to Gabe Wilchin. Wilchin drives into the paint, spins, fade away, no good, rebound by Terpstra. Terpstra quickly ahead to Wilkin. Wilkin on the far side, almost into the corner, kicks it back out to Terpstra. Top of the key, Cook, three, off the back iron, no good. Nolan Teal swats it back out. Wilchin ahead to Ryder. Ryder, I thought he walked with it, and Teal with the finish, he with five, 35, 30, I'm sorry, 37, 31. I hate, uh, I hate agreeing with you, but I agree. I think I, I missed a travel there, too. <laughs> McCulley out, three-point attempt. Marnock, no good, rebound, Terpstra, and he is fouled by Landon Ryder. Ryder with two. I think some popcorn ended out at midcourt. There was a Shecker that went out and grabbed it. And Jack Terpstra will go to the line to shoot a pair. 248 left to go in the third. First one is up and in for Terpstra. And we're gonna see Drake Hodgson, or I'm sorry, Mason Small come into the ball game. A little bit of an oxymoronic name because he is one big boy. Mason's 6'4 freshman. Doesn't quite have the weight that his counterparts have, but he uh, he is still a decent size. Sets a screen for Lubin, and they're going to call him right away for a moving screen. Thoughts? I actually watched that screen be set, and I disagree with that one. 
That's why we're up here and they're down there. Wilkin brings it up over the timeline to the logo. Hand off to Cook. Cook eyes a three, and we're going to have an offensive foul. I believe that one's going to be on Nielsen, the way he's reacting. Went to screen, then sealed, and just kept pulling his guy back with him. 2.31 left to go in the third. Jays trail this one by eight. Lubin brings it up over the timeline. Lubin stolen away by Cook. Bad pass. Cook puts it up and in. Leighton Cook with 19 on the night. 41 to 31. Trevor Teal with it now near the top of the key. Puts up a long two. Bad shot. Foul. Bailed out. Fourth team foul, and they're going to call that one on Nielsen. That's his third. I'm going to say he got slapped in the face. Puts up the first. No good. Subs come into the ball game. Trevor at the line, puts up the second, able to knock that one down. Westerners lead this one by nine. Allard with it, top of the key, passes left to Terpstra. Terpstra thought he was gonna have a cutter, gets it out to Nielsen, Nielsen to Allard. Out to Cook, Cook with it now, Allard. Eyes a three, kicks it left to Terpstra, 15 on the shot clock. In the corner, back at the top of the key, Allard, Cook. Cook drives left side of the paint, puts it up, no good. Lubin with a foul. Dylan Lubin picks up his first, team's fifth. It was a shooting foul regardless. Leighton Cook puts up the first, knocks it down. Now has 20. Puts up the second, off the back iron, no good. Wilchin with a rebound. Wilchin slowly up over the timeline. Free throw line jumper, no good, rebound by Cook. Cook ahead to McCauley, swiped away by Trevor Teal, gets his, Terpstra's got it now, over to Cook. Free throw line jumper, knocks it down. A little Jordan-esque. He just is hot right now. Hard to defend hot. Lubin over to Teal. Trevor hands it off. Nope. Kicks it right. Mason Small out to Trevor Teal. Puts up the three. Good. Trevor Teal now with nine. 44-35. Nielsen. Terpstra in the corner. Passes out, top of the key. Cook. Three. No good. I thought I hit the safety strap, but they're going to call a foul, I believe, on McCauley. It is on McCauley. Gabe will be shooting two. 32.1. Left to go in the third. Wilchin at the line. Puts with the first off the front iron and side iron, no good. Is that does that count as an announcer jinx since I brought it up earlier this game? Must be. Must be. I knew I was gonna be blamed for it either way. Dang it. Three, three subs. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it's been a long break. <laughs> <laughs> Wilchin puts up the second one, no good. Rebound by McCulley. Ahead to Cook, shot clock's off. Of course the scoreboard's by Ag State. Schuster Truck brings you the bottom line tonight. Cook, 
near the top of the key. Five second call is on him. He, now it's off. Terpstra with 14 on the game clock. Terpstra hands it off to Cook. Jay's harassing him. Cook, five. Gets it down low. McCauley, no good. Rebound fall for Lehman. I'm sorry, that was Nielsen on the shot. They're going to talk to Lehman, make sure everything's good. They shake it up. Akron fans were all in a tizzy. As I don't think there's much there. I think they just ran into each other. <clears throat> As the third quarter ends, Akron leads this one 44-35. AgriVision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven 8 bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling and Drew Bickford here with you on the call tonight. Remind you the next time we're on the air is Friday night as the Jays take on Hinton. Nolan Teal feeds it to Jackson Kramer. Three, no good from Wilchin. Rebound by McCauley. I'll be solo on that one. And Dean Harpenau will join me next Tuesday night as the Jays take on Rems and St. Mary's. Foul in the act of shooting. Of course, Tuesday night is the tailgate. Fouls on Landon Ryder. Third for him, first in the fourth quarter. Tailgate featuring, um, let me see. This is uh, taverns and macaroni and cheese and a cookie. And you get to see Carolyn Bickford's smiling face. First one is up and in for Cook. He has 23 on the night. Depends if she has to babysit the night before or not. She may not be smiling then. Uh, Second one rattles around, no good. She better be smiling. Trevor Teal with the rebound. Brings it up over the timeline. Left hand drives toward the baseline, spins. Now in the paint, puts up a jumper. No, and that one's good. Man, I thought that one was floating toward no good, but it was. He's got 11 according to my incorrect stats. 45, 37, just over seven minutes to go here in this final quarter. Nielsen, top of the key, gets it to Cook. Cook over to Marnock. Wilkin, free throw line. Nielsen pushes left. Three point attempt. Off the back iron, no good. Rebound, fought for. Nolan Teal is an unfair fight on that one. That shot up and good for Leighton Cook. He now has 25. Leighton has single handedly kind of taken it to Galen that, uh, tonight. Kind of surprised that Galen hasn't tried to deny the ball to him. Um, they're still letting them go get it. Um, looking like they're maybe going to start trying to have Nolan deny him the ball. But every the whole offense has gone through late, whether he scored or driven and kicked. Um, he's the one breaking down the defense every time. McCauley to Nielsen. Down low is Marnock. Puts up a right hand. And that one falls for Marnock. I thought that was going to just roll out. Instead, it falls. 49-39, Jackson Kramer puts up a three, off the mark, no good, rebound, Nolan Teal. Lane clears for him like the Red Sea, gets his own rebound, fought for, we're gonna have a tie up and it's gonna be Akron basketball. Great rebound, then brought it down to his hip. Tell you what, that lane just completely cleared out. I think they all thought somebody else was gonna stay at put and I think it kind of surprised Nolan. Leighton Cook slowly brings it up over the timeline with a right hand. Dribbles toward the middle of the paint. Fought for. 
Simultaneous possession will go to J the uh, Jays. Inbound to Ryder. Ryder brings it up over the timeline, over to Trevor Teal. Trevor tried to get it to Kramer, and Kramer I don't think was looking. Quickly ahead, Terpstra puts up a floater. No good. Rebound by Wilchin. Jays have a four on three. Quickly ahead. Other way, Cook puts it up and in. He's nearing his career high, according to his grandma. And she was never wrong back in the day when I worked with her, so I'm going to believe her. That one is swatted at. being swung around. Out of bounds, it will be Jay's basketball. Tried to get Jackson set up on the block down there. Just a little bit of an errant pass. Floater is up and in for Trevor Teal. Trevor now has 13. He's had a nice night. 51-41. Terpstra with it now. Swung around, down low, Marnock draw four, drew four defenders. No good, Terpstra swide, swiped away by Wilchin ahead to Kramer. Kramer brings it up over the timeline, just under four and a half left. Trevor Teal puts nice. up the reverse play nice. up and in. Nice look, nice shot. Teal with 15 on the night. First team foul for Akron and the foul was on. Missed two, the foul was on. Waiting for it to come up on the board. It's a mystery. I don't know. Trevor's got 16 though. Impressive night for him. Cook brings it up the floor. Cook directing traffic, gets a screen, picks it over. To McCauley. Cook with it now. McCauley thought about a three. Top of the key is Marnock. Pulls a trigger on a three. Back iron no good. McCauley to Cook. Cook on the far side. Back to McCauley in between the circles. Near side is Wilkin. Drive. Marnock puts it up and in. Strong right arm. 53-44. Chase with a little too much of a deficit, I think, to climb out of here is that one's blocked by McCauley. That's, Gabe loves that fadeaway, and he shoots it really well, but it, it avoids him getting to the line. Right? For a guy that's shooting 100% coming into the night, I know he missed two tonight, but he needs to get to the line more than 15 times through, I don't know how many games they've played, 10? Maybe not quite that many. Cook, cross court, Terpstra, McCauley, Top of the key, three, good from Marnock. He's been out there all night long, Drew, and he's just now pulling the trigger on him. 56-44. That shot, no good. Nolan Teal walking back with with uh, Eric Kellen. It looked like he was rubbing his head. I'm not sure if he was bleeding or what. Still kind of rubbing in his head. McCauley. Almost swiped. Cook. Terpstra now far corner. And we're going to have a foul. Foul's going to be on Gabe. That's Gabe's second. And he will go out of the game to get a quick blow and a timeout on the floor. 30 seconds. We'll take it with him. Back in 30 on Fuller. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you so you'll get the care that you need. 
We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling, Drew Bickford, as we are in the final two and a half minutes of the ball game here tonight. Akron Westfield leads this one 56 to 44. Ball looking to be inbounded, gets it in. Terpstra. Jay's back in that 3-2 zone. And foul committed. I'm going to call that one on Landon Ryder. That's his fourth. Terpstra near the top of the key. Hands it off to McCauley. McCauley trying to get it to Cook. Does. Back to McCauley. Cross court to Terpstra. Terpstra near the baseline. Thought about a corner three. Swatted away by Mason Small. Nice job by Mason. Kind of surprised Leighton didn't pull that one in the corner. Down low, Mason Small up over the back. Oh, wow. Count the basket and the foul. I believe those are his first varsity points. I believe. <laughs> foul is going to be on Marnock. That's his third. Did a little happy dance over here for Mason Small. Puts up the free throw, no good. He'll have to work on those. And it's gonna be Jay's basketball. Maybe he missed it on purpose. I don't know. Jay's need a quick bucket here. Then we need to see some pressure. Yeah, buddy. Trevor gets it in to Dylan Lubin. Lubin puts it up and in. Got away with a little left arm shove. Little forearm shiva action. Oh, double dribble. And now we got a timeout by the Westerners. 141 left to go in the ball game. Jays trail by eight. We'll be back in 60. You're watching Fuller. Catholic in Lamars, Iowa instills respect and Christian values in a caring environment for students preschool through 12th grade. Teachers and staff go above and beyond to provide a high quality education and are dedicated to student success. We are a community striving to live God's word each day through academic service opportunities, athletics, and so much more. Galen Catholic School, in partnership with Spalding Catholic School, all are welcome to experience excellence in education and leadership through Christ. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with EPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling, Drew Bickford. A little slap happy here at the end of this second ball game of the night. 141 left to go. Akron leads this 156 to 41. Trevor Teal will be the inbounder. Gotta imagine he's gonna try to get it into Dylan Lubin. He does. Vegas took a beating on that one. Lubin drives toward the baseline, kicks it out to Wilchin. Wilchin to, uh, to Landon Ryder, knocks that one down. And a quick timeout by the Jays. Jays Bring this one down. back into this. Full timeout. Sure, we'll take it with them. Back in 60 on full. Since the 1980s, Colbeck Incorporated has been a family-run business providing their customers with quality wood and feed grinding services throughout Northwest Iowa. Colbeck Incorporated knows that your time is valuable and they pride themselves on getting the job done in a prompt and reliable fashion. 
Local cattle feeders have been relying on Colbeck Incorporated hay grinding for 30 years, and Brian and Kevin are proud of their partnerships they've built with their customers. Whether it's grinding, mulch, or hauling, call Colbeck Incorporated today and see what they can do for you. AgriVision Equipment has you covered with a wide selection of John Deere tractors in the area. Our experts can help match you with the right equipment at the right price. Utilize one of our convenient pre-built packages or build and customize your own with our JD Buy Online site. New financing? No problem. Apply online in five minutes or less. Our team is ready to find the package for you. Don't settle for less. Shop in-store or online at agrivisionequipment.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling, Drew Bickford, as well as the Jays and Westerners. Westerners lead this one by five. 127 left to go in the game. Ball inbounded to Cook. Cook's had a nice game here tonight. Wilkin gets it up over the timeline, and Gabe commits the foul. That's his third. He committed on McCauley. So one more to get to the bonus. Ball inbounded to Cook. Guys, Nolan Teal shadowing him. Corner. I'm sorry. Yeah, Cook with it now. Far side, McCauley. Terpstra back to McCauley. 17 on the shot clock. 103 left on the game clock. Top of the near the top of the key. Marnock travel with the basketball. Subs coming in for the Jays. What's left of this crowd. Bucket, bucket here gets us get it to a one possession game. Hand off to Trevor Teal. Kicks it over to Ryder. Top of the key. Three good. And in Ryder. Now with nine and a full timeout for the Jays. Back in 60 on Fuller. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs and the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Forget the ramps and hassles when hauling. They are built to tilt. Tilt bed trailers made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. We're excited to now offer one of the best tilt bed trailers on the market, ranging from 22 to 28 feet in length. And like everything we manufacture, these trailers are built to work last and make your life easier. All with confidence when you hook up to a tilt bed trailer made at Holstein Fabrication and Holstein Manufacturing. Visit us online today at HolsteinMFG.com. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling, Drew Bickford. Jay's trail this one now by two. 41.6 left to go. Westerners basketball possession arrow in favor of the Westerners. Six second difference, shot clock to game clock. Being trapped in the backcourt, able to quickly get it up. Carter Wilkin back to Terpstra. Terpstra near the center circle. Gets it over to Cook. Cook being double teamed in that corner. Calls a timeout on the floor with 26 seconds left. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll stay right here instead of kicking it to a commercial. Drew, Jays are on a 10-0 run here. The, the clock is ticking down. <laughs> so if they choose not to foul with 20 seconds left in the shot clock now, um, you're only gonna have about five or six seconds to get to get down the court and score. And if Akron scores, it basically puts the game away. Uh, it's risky, but we'll see. Maybe they're they're looking to trap in the corners. Um, Akron late picked it up right there in the corner and and let the Jays kind of swarm him. If it's if it's Wilkin, McCauley, Cook, uh, Marnock, and Terpstra on the floor, who who would you want to put on the line? I don't know. I didn't look close enough to the free throw percentages, I'll be honest. I know that's my job, Matt. I, I failed. Um, to me, I would I'm think... Not, I don't want Leighton on the line because he shot the ball really well. Just so, based on points scored tonight, I want to put McCauley on the line. Um, He's got two on the night. Ah! 
ball looking to be inbounded. Is inbounded to Cook. No foul committed. Cook on the far side. Ball caught by Nielsen. Of course, Nielsen's kind of a big boy. Back down in the corner, Wilkin. I'm sorry, oh. Wilkin there. And they're going to call the foul on the floor. Either way, it's going to be a two-shot foul. And it's going to be on 14, Nolan Teal. That's his third. And it sends Wilkin to the line. He has a 69% free throw percentage. Giggity. Puts up the first, knocks it down. That one was a big one. 57-54. Carter Wilkin looking to make this a two possession game with 11.8 seconds to go. Puts up the second, knocks it down. He now has four. Trevor Teal quickly over the timeline, hands it off to Landon Ryder. Landon over to Kramer. Kramer puts up the three, no good. Rebound by Terpstra. Hands it off to Cook. And that's the ball game. We'll wrap this one up after this. You're watching Jays and Westerners on Fuller Digital Solutions. AgriVision Equipment and Exact Emerge Planner Technology is here to help you maximize your yield and efficiency, along with a proven eight bushel per acre yield advantage because of the pinpoint accuracy of seed depth and placement. You can cover 50 acres per hour without compromising your stand. We know the risk of planting outside the optimal planting window, so don't let the weather control your bottom line. When you partner with AgriVision Equipment, you get access to the best service and technology support in the area. And visit any one of our 15 locations today to learn more about our large selection of new and used planters. AgriVision Equipment, focused on your future. Reliance means being dependable. And when it comes to comfort in your home, you want Reliance from a place you can trust with a product you can count on. That's why Marcus Lumber stocks Reliance brand water heaters. Because with Reliance in the name, it's the brand you can trust. Marcus Lumber has been stocking and installing Reliance water heaters for decades. So choose the name you trust for your home. Choose Marcus Lumber and Reliance water heaters. Welcome back to the Deb Campbell Memorial Gym. Matt Schilling, Drew Bickford, and the Jays fall in the double hutter. Both of them, both teams fell here tonight. And the difference in this one, in this game, was a uh, 20, 27 point effort by Leighton Cook. Leighton, uh, the Jays executed their game plan to perfection. I'm going to guess, with Carson Irons being out tonight, that the one thing they didn't want was for Jackson to get hot early and be able to. Layup after layup after layup. And they executed. Uh, he had about two points, a half maybe. But Leighton carried them all the way through that first half. If they weren't going to if they were gonna lay off him, then he was going to take advantage. And boy, did he ever. And it just continued the whole game. I think, I don't even know, I don't think he scored the last four minutes of the game. And he had 27. Kind of surprised they didn't get it in his hands and just let him go to work when they needed to down the stretch. Um, kind of worked in, in the Jays' favor. But just too little too late from the Jays tonight. Scoring looked like this. Carter Wilkin had four. Allard with two. Ashton McCulley had two. Leighton Cook with 27. Jack Ter Terpstra with seven. Jackson Marnock with nine. And Casey Nielsen had seven. For the Jays, Trevor Teal with 16. Dylan Lubin with four. Landon Ryder with nine. Gabe Wilchin allegedly had 22. Mason Small had two. And Dan Lehman had one. Drew, any final thoughts? The only thought I have tonight, um, I asked my daughter for some popcorn at halftime of the game, and uh, she never brought it. She just came up here with no popcorn after the game still. That's disappointing. So just an overall disappointing um, end of the night. Jays couldn't quite pull it off, and neither could my daughter. Next game for the Jays will be on Friday night. We'll be right here on Fuller Digital Solutions as the Jays take on Hinton. On behalf of the entire Fuller Digital Solutions team, my name is Matt Schilling saying so long. We'll see you next time.